All right, welcome to Nerds by Screenlight. My name is Aaron. I'm Phil. I'm Zoe. I'm Vicky. And so we start off, um, it feels like we're going to start off with kind of like a sad, or a, kind of a sad thing, but um, we're coming on the heels of um, the news that Matthew Perry, um, the actor who played um, Chandler in Friends, has passed away at the age of, what, 54? Yep. Um, yeah. And so we're all of the age where Friends was a part of our life as it was going on, as it was live, happening on television every week, you know, must-see TV, NBC, it was, it was Friends, man. Um, I never, I never got into the show, and it was always a sticking point with friends of mine that I didn't. Same, so, actually. So, but I've gone back and I've watched clips. I think my thing is I can't watch it. I can't watch it like long term because it's like it's like watching any show where you're just like, okay, these characters are making me crazy. I can't handle them anymore. <laughs> friends was kind of like that way. <laughs> also, when you look through the lens of 2023 with the, how they were living and how like easy life was for them right that's <laughs> You're true. like but even then it can't it couldn't have been that easy anyway friends rant aside um matthew perry um passed away and we were talking off air we're like what is our favorite memory of matthew perry and or chandler um i'm not gonna go with mine because i want to i want to hold on i want to see what everyone else says so we'll start with phil uh benny from fallout new vegas Okay, he was he was such a huge fan of Fallout Three that the developers reached out to him to voice a character in New Vegas. Oh my gosh, I did not know that. And he's the one where, right in the opening scene of the game, he shoots you in the face. <laughs> that's that's Matthew Perry. Yeah, that is Matthew. <laughs> that Perry. is fantastic. I didn't know that. Yep. I'm not going to put so it. so if you're not a fan of Chandler, you you can you can get your revenge that way. <laughs> By playing New Vegas, or you can become friends with him. Okay. But yeah, that's that's my memory of Matthew Perry. I, I loved him in that. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back and play that intro then because I that is new information to me. Yep, I love it. I love I, I learn something from Phil at least every week, at least once. <laughs> it may not be what I want to learn. Yeah, but I learn. True. <laughs> Very true. It, it it may give me nightmare fuel, but I love learning from <laughs> Phil. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Help me! I'm trapped in this room with these people. Anyway, sorry. He's got a twinkle in his eyes, though. <laughs> I, I, he invites us over. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Can't let you into my home. This happens every time. Sorry, I'm also coming off of having watched Five Nights at Freddy's, which we're going to talk about here after this. And who, Dowdy? <laughs> who, who about? Who, boy? Uh, all right. So, Zoe, tell us what is your Matthew Perry moment? I would just have to say, without Chandler and friends, there would be no friends. He mm. was like the pure comedy of the show, mm-hmm. and like watching their reunion. Um, like he improved most of that, yeah. And like it was all live; they had a live audience. And even if he messed up, he would just keep going with it. And oh, nice. I love this kind of quote that he said that he wanted to keep making Monica smile yeah. and laugh more and more. So his jokes just got funnier and funnier because he wanted to make her happy. Aww. And I don't know; he's just such a sweetheart, and it's so sad that he's gone. Yeah. There was a quote I saw recently that was saying, "Like I, I want a guy that looks at me like Matthew Perry looks at Courtney." Yeah. It's like, very cute. Uh, yeah. In your your Chandler or um, Matthew Raymond? It's um, his character in the whole nine yards. <laughs> oh, yeah. but he tries to hide behind the lampshade from the mob boss. <laughs> yeah, I totally epic. forgot about that movie. It's so good. Is that the one where he runs into the into the glass on the on the porch? Like he, he's running and he like boom Maybe. slams up against the sliding door, and the kid, the mob boss, who's played by Bruce Willis, just looks at him. And it's just goes, it's nah. legendary. This film. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's like, well, it's, it's not really like Rosneck on a lace, but it is in a way because you've got all these murderers mm-hmm. and this very dark humor, and there's the one normal character that is just like, what are you guys thinking? <laughs> yeah. And it gets all wrapped into this. It's so and they, great. They this, the sequel wasn't as good. I haven't seen the sequel. The whole 10 yards wasn't as good. But yeah, the whole nine yards was fantastic. So here's what I love about Chandler. Chandler's character, the character of Chandler from Matthew Perry. I identify with him a lot as a younger, like looking back now, I, like I was very like energetic and like kind of sarcastic. You got um, these facial expressions yeah. too that are great. <laughs> Chandler, Chandler Bing is, is a sarcastic machine. I yes. love the sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite moment. And I've, I, 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 I don't know. I actually know why. So like Monica's asking him, like he's having a meltdown or whatever. She's like, you're panicking. And he goes, join me. Won't you? Yes. <laughs> It's just like, oh, Matthew Perry. But like he's just any him and Joey's relationship in that show 
is fantastic. And one of the p- images that people have been putting on reblogging and sharing is the is the GIF of Joey in the com- in the comfy chair next to an empty comfy next to the empty empty chair where Chandler was because I guess it was there they were they had you know moved into different places or whatever. <coughs> I can't remember the storyline of it exactly, but it was people have been sharing that a lot. Um, yeah. The other one they've been show, they, the other one they've been sharing is when Chandler says goodbye to Joey. Like they they go their separate ways. He moves out, um, and so he's like Chandler's like, okay, well, I guess I don't know what we'll, we'll see. He's like, I'll, I'll we'll see you the night at the coffee shop. He's like, oh yeah, I guess so. All right, we'll see you. And he walks out and closes the door, and then like two seconds later, Joey comes back in and just like wraps his arms around him, and they give him a big hug. And it's just it's just like. You don't get that much. You don't get that, and you don't get anything better than that than '90s television, where even before that Matthew Perry had died, that show in those moments, looking through the lens of 2023 as an adult and as somebody who's gone through their young adult life, I think when we were, you know, 16, 17, 18, we didn't really understand why that was so momentous and why Friends was such an important show. Now, having grown up, I understand now how that and why those friendships were so important and why those characters are so important doesn't mean that I can make it through an entire episode without going, are you kidding me? <laughs> that show oh, is yeah. to the test of time. Yeah. Yes. I see elementary kids wearing Friends-inspired Friends Friends in the office. Those yep. two shows have maintained their cultural zeitgeist um, beyond what you would normally expect. Like, you... <laughs> They've done what Game of Thrones Game of Thrones couldn't. They have remained. They have across generations. Mm-hmm. They have maintained their presence. And I guarantee to you, unless NBC or somebody came up with a better show, with a better premise, and a better long-lasting character, characters and characters arc, you know, they're that's a hundred years from now. Friends and at the Office will be on our TV screens or mm-hmm. on our whatever screens that we have, and that's what we'll have. So there you go. Yeah, I. <laughs> I'm j- like it's like when Robin Williams passed. When Robin Williams passed, ev- like he, we we everyone had grown up with him. Multiple generations had experienced his genius and his yes. magic. And when he was gone, it was like, oh man, and everyone was just genuinely sad. Yeah. And it was it's one of those things. Like, um, and this is this is off topic, but um, did you you guys are again? Are I'm like ten years older, I guess. Um, we never did you ever watch Night Court, the original Night Court? Yes. So I have not. The guy who played Bull, the bald headed tall yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. he also passed away. Oh no. And so that was like and I know the joke is they come in threes and sometimes yeah. they do. Sometimes it does happen. So I'm waiting for what No Like well who's the third? Like what what, what do we get next? But both him and Matthew Perry were young. Yes. Way too they, young. They were they were not old, they were not in a situation where like, Oh well, okay, it's time to go. Like it's like, man, he, we're we're losing, and so it's it's heartbreaking because obviously we watch these people and we, we celebrate them. So, all right, well, from from mourning the loss of of cherished stars <laughs> to the weirdest double feature coming up next yes. here on Nerds by Screenland, I think we've ever done for episode thirty one. We decided it was time because Polly Shore, when are you gonna let me go and live my life, Father? I can't do it justice. And the father, come on! <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. To the to the much anticipated and overdue movie of Five Nights at Freddy's, which is going to be an interesting. And I have I, it, the conversation is going to be fascinating. So, uh, buckle up, grab your tea, strap in, sit down, hold on, keep all hands and feet inside, unless you're drinking your tea, and get ready for Nerds by Screenlight episode 31 coming up next. Get nerdy with me. Get nerdy with me. All I really need for you to do is just please. I can stop. Talk to me. Talk to me. All right, welcome back to Nerds by Screenlight. My name is Aaron. I am Phil. I'm Zoe. I'm Vicky. And uh, we, <laughs> in between the, the in, in the intro music, uh, I asked the question, what should we do first? It was like, Pinocchio, let's get it over <laughs> with. Uh, so this was done on a dare, basically, for me last week. Yeah, how do and you it was feel actually, about your decision? It was a negotiation between <laughs> me and Zoe, because she was like, well, you're going you to see Five Nights at Freddy's. And I was like, okay, mate, but here, I said, there's a compromise. I was like, Pinocchio, that's, oh. that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to spread the pain. Six percent on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. Pinocchio, a true story, because yep. there's like 20 Pinocchio movies. Yeah. <laughs> 
It doesn't go with the true story. It says, it's a true story. Yeah, like, my foot it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll get into it. And Phil has a big foot, so, you know, that's it's very... I actually don't know what size shoe, what size shoe do you wear, Phil? Ten. Okay, so big, it's not that bad. Big, big feet. Middle, middle bit? Well, no, I'm yeah. like a nine and a half, so ten, ten, yeah. nine, okay. All right, now from foot size to Pinocchio, no size. I can't. I don't I even know. Me I'm trying to segue. I'm trying to be a master segwayer. It's not really working. To no good. size that doesn't move at all in this movie. His nose does not grow, not no. one time. No, and even they though me- they mention it in yeah, the Yeah, they beginning. mention it. And it's like, they're like, no, there's no nose. But well, why would you move that people in the story? It's like, oh my goodness, you guys. It's like the whole story. Like, that's the whole Pinocchio <laughs> thing. Yeah. His nose grows. But I here's my here's my Russian sus- people are interesting. Well, here's my suspicion. I suspect that because it would have taken more, like, CG, like graphics work, like animation work to make that nose grow. Mm. Oh. That's probably what happened. We'll talk about the graphics. So the 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 the, the, the preload. Let's preload people who have maybe missed out on this excitement. Um, <laughs> I'm they sure didn't that's miss out everyone. On anything. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you don't need to waste your time. We're here. Watch this. We film, we, we watched. We it suffered so you don't, for you. Yeah, we watched. You're it. welcome. <laughs> we we watched so you don't have to. And you're really gonna you're gonna it's gonna be a great ride. So, Polly Shore. And John Hader, who is Napoleon, by the way, from Napoleon Dynamite. No, I knew knew that voice. He's from. He's the horse. So it's Polly Shore. So it's Encino Man and Paul and and Napoleon Dynamite. Actually, Polly Shore isn't Encino Man. That's Brendan Fraser. But anyway, you get my gift. Um, Polly Shore and (laughs) it's two known comedians if you think about it. And in their leg- own different ways. Legends in their own yes. right. Polly Shore is a pretty, 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 pretty good actor. You know, he's he's not he's no slouch. Although in this movie you could make an argument mm-hmm. that he is, but it's like then you've got the rest of this cast, which are no names, which I don't even know who they are. Right. Mm-hmm. So okay, so the movie starts, and uh, it makes me sadder. <laughs> That the movie starts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know this was a rough ride, Zoe, but come on. I know that that's Napoleon Dynamite because the whole time I was like, "Who is that?" I know that voice from somewhere. Aww. Eat your thoughts, Tina. Oh, God. Eat your food. I'm no. just get like, your own. Are, were they broke uh, and desperate? And maybe they were. Polly Shore was definitely broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to do this, maybe John Heater just was like, "Okay, I'll just do it for his, I can't." And yeah. here's my here's my theory. My theory is is that they didn't think it would get big. That it wouldn't go anywhere. That it would went and viral blew up. on TikTok. It yeah. was insane. <laughs> and to Polly Shore's credit, when it did make fun of him, he just rolled with it. Yeah, he had a course. great attitude, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was fantastic. He still promotes it on his website because I was scrolling through it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I love how this podcast has led Zoe to go to Polly Shore's website for research. Well, I follow him on Facebook, so I'm like, let's oh. click his website and see what's going on there. And it still says Pinocchio. <laughs> That went viral on TikTok, and I was just like, "Dude, oh, Polly Shore, you're just making fun of yourself at this point." God bless you, child. You're doing the you're, you're doing the Lord's work, yes, uh, or something. Um, so here's the thing: none of the voices work. No, none, none of them, none. And and I told Zoe, some of them sound like they were AI. Mm-hmm. And they're all doing terrible accents, yep. and sometimes they just stop doing the accent. <laughs> And it's like, who's talking now? That right. is a different person. I think Polly Shore is the only like consistent voice, actually. Even I, yeah, to, to give him yeah. any credit, yes, yeah. that is. Yeah, he is. Everyone consistent. else fumbled it. He is consistent. Badly. <laughs> well, so you like you. We've seen good animation. We've seen yeah. good good movie cartoon movies like this. We've seen with good acting. The thing about and again, I'm I'm a very very low end like potential voice actor person, but something that they that that, that I know is you have to engage. In whatever the character's doing, you have to be able to like in Im- almost inherit like embody embody. Thank you. That's where I was, I was imbibe, but that's when you drink something. So embody, <laughs> you have to imbibe the character. You have to drink the character's essence, and it's a whole witchcraft thing. Halloween, you know, I smell children. I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> We swear. Ah, I was watching Zoe. I was watching Zoe to see where we were going. She's like, I don't know what you're doing, but it's gonna be terrible, no matter what we do here. You always blame me. <laughs> I'm not blaming you. I'm just narrating what the audience is ex- could be experiencing in in, in 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 studio in house. Um, so yeah, it's terrible. Their voice. Like so, you, as as a voice actor, you have to. I've I've watched like when they engage with the the story and they engage and get animated and 
But this just sounds like they just sat down in a chair and were like, all right, no. He goes, Paulie, 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 are you ready to record? <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm ready to record. Let's go. <laughs> all right, Paulie, just read from the paper. Don't you don't need to you don't need to know anything. You're just reading from the paper. All right, guys, let's go. All right. Yeah, I got I got something to say about the okay, so I had I had <laughs> just has feelings. I had just recently, like a couple days ago, Zoe and I watched the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. The animation by yeah. Seth Rogen. Yeah. Some of the best Ooh, voice acting. Really? And the animation is wow. Like I've, it's so yeah. unique. I've never yeah. seen anything like it. And the way that the voice acting works yeah. is they had actual kids play the turtles. Okay. They were all in the same room at the same time. Oh, that's brilliant. And they could improv their conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this Pinocchio movie, it's like you got Polly Shore recording one line. Yeah. Two months later, the horse guy, Napoleon, <laughs> records his. Yeah. Polly gets it back, and then he says the next line. It, they don't even seem like they're having yeah. a real conversation. They're, not connected. Yeah. they're just talking. <laughs> so they're just saying words. Speak, speaking of of the Leonardo connection, uh, did you pick up on the slam on Leonardo DiCaprio? Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like it's 2022. We're gonna hate they Leonardo had no DiCaprio. Right. Like what? Well, uh, well, they called him a selfish actor or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> I wonder if they wanted him to be in the movie and he rejected <laughs> them. <laughs> The guy that's all about saving the earth and mentions this in every single acceptance speech. <laughs> Selfish? Like, really? You have no idea who this person is. Oh. It just, I, I, He's a lot of things. Well, because it wasn't, that wasn't in the trailer. In the trailer, it was, oh, Leonardo? No, I go out with pizza. We'll pizza all the time. Yeah, the, just the, bash the, my turtles. Yeah, the Leo, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, like, you know, whatever you're going to call it, snarky line, didn't make it into the trailer, but it was in the movie. And I was just like, Hmm. What is that? Okay. All right, all right. Russia, Russia doesn't like Leo. Okay, fine. Whatever you do, you. The audacity. The, well. <laughs> the uh, the uh, Russia. You're on. Uh, you're. You, never mind the whole Ukraine. I would argue I would not take it too personally. <laughs> it got family involved in the film. It's no problem. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's so good. There are family. There are the. It looked like they were brothers or whatever. Two of the writers have the same last name. Hmm. So they're probably related. Family, it's possible. Probably anyway. maybe. All right. So we'll move, let's move back to the Russian connection. <laughs> And um, Geppetto is terrible. Yes. Um, so here's he the has thing. no facial expression. No, no, no. You don't get the weight of his situation. Uh -uh. You don't, and it's like you don't know why he carved Pinocchio. He's a little lonely. I he guess. was just lonely. Yeah, I think he's like you. You're he's my like, hey, sit now. here. I look less alone if you're sitting at the yeah. table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think also because the the graphics are so janky. Yeah. Um, we were talking as we were watching it, and like there was moments where like there was like a sunset. I was like, "Oh, that's pretty." Right. And then we got to see the leaves, and I'm like, "Okay, we're back in." <laughs> and Phil, you can help me out with this. Would you say it was like PS2 or PS3 kind of graphics? Uh, I would say cutscene PS2. Okay, cutscene PS2. I almost handed you the game controllers after you yeah. said that. <laughs> like, this is make it better. <laughs> go, Pinocchio's gonna run away and not you be. You can't in the movie fast forward now. through the dialogue you don't <laughs> yeah. like. That's what you do. <laughs> Just, Zoe, I got I got to call you out. Oh, she was no. like, she was like, I love these graphics. <laughs> I did that at first too. Like Don't the feel landscapes, bad. Maybe. Yeah. The landscapes yeah. are pretty. Yes. Some of them. I was like, this is the only good thing in the film. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, it, I felt like I was watching a 3D Disney TV show, mm, and not a good one. Not yeah, a good like one. A really badly made. They're one. like released because like we gotta put it on we gotta put it on the television because we gotta make our money back. Like at first, I compared it to like Paw Patrol, but then. Uh, <laughs> Zoe called Ooh. me out and I was that's like, an, no. That's an insult to Paw Patrol. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah, say that at the elementary school. They'll come that. for you. Yeah. Well, you will. I'll admit, I was, I was wrong about that. You yeah. will get all kinds of letters. All kinds of emails. The audacity. Paw Patrol, how <laughs> dare you, sir? Dear Mrs. Yeah. Delay, yeah, why did you let this person in <laughs> your room? <laughs> <laughs> My child. No, Paw Patrol is fine. We love Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. It's the best thing since since Shakespeare, apparently. And then, oh God, what is what was the deal with some of the characters when they spoke? They looked directly at you in the, in the camera. <laughs> they were looking creepy. in your soul, Phil. <laughs> I guess it was I like it was lose. like talking to an Oblivion NPC. Yeah. is what it felt like. <laughs> so Phil's referencing a PC a PC game, but yeah, because they just stare at you dead eyed. But they do it in Starfield too, which yeah, oh, it's a Bethesda bug. That's just their thing. That's just what yeah. they. Yeah, but it's not a good thing. And why could no one ever say the name the same way, <laughs> like anyone's name? So we yeah what the, the horse's name uh, Tybalt 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 and T Tybalt, they Tybalt. Said it a million ways <laughs> and then uh, what was the bad guy's name M Mal oh, oh his is weird it's like I gotta be careful because I might say a bad word <laughs> let's, let's not let's not do uh, that <laughs> and say that we... it's, it's the end it's the end of his name is just weird hold so. on let me let me let's let's do let's do the IMDb because yeah. why not because. <laughs> We're professionals here in the Nerds by Screenlight studio because, you know, yeah. this, is, this is what we 
a true store uh, a tr oh no pinocchio sorry pinocchio yeah. How do you spell Pinocchio? P-I-N-N-O. Two C's. Two. H-I-O. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. I think it's Not one Guillermo del Toro's. One Gu C? That was two. I want to see. Because I, I want to see. What we should probably do is we should probably pick up um, Guillermo del, Tor del Toro's Pinocchio next week. Um, oh, and then there's Pinocchio with Tom Just Hanks. Easy. There's so many. Oh, yeah. my gosh. There's like 15, I think. Holy wow. Okay, let's see. Can we not? True. Story. Yeah, do all of these, please. Well, yeah. not. No, I'm not going to make us do all the Pinocchios. <laughs> we need to move that on. would just be mean. <laughs> that would be rude. Um, sure. Okay, let's do Here we go. So, oh, so John Heater was the Tybalt in the English version. I'm sure there was a Russian. Um, of course. Oh, so here's the interesting part. So Tom Kenny was Geppetto. He was in the English version. John Heater was in Tybalt in the English version. Pauly Shore, English version. But then the rest of them, it looks like they were not. So they were all, the rest of them were their own, like they did their own thing. Hmm. Um, or maybe not. I don't, anyway. So let's find his name. Let me get the cast. Top cast. Yeah, the character's I just name. I all the cast. Give me the cast. Could you please? That'd be great. It starts with the um, M. Oh, God, yeah. Mojo Foco. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's his name. That's yeah, his so name. Yes, the bad you, guy. You can see. But in the movie, they call him Mojo, Mojo Foco. Yeah. About slipped. And then they also call him Mojo Fuco. Yeah, it is. They just and like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, what is his name? Is this a running? I joke? know his name, but I can't say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Dmitri Isilvov is the is the actor who plays that character. Oh, bless his heart. <sighs> and that's a lot. He's of one of the ones that definitely switches his accent, like <laughs> yes. in the middle of speaking. <laughs> it's like, what happened? English is not my first language. Like it, yeah. it, it felt like a fever dream. Well, and even when he's yelling, there's like no emotion. <laughs> it's like monotone. <laughs> I literally think they probably all recorded their lines Separate. either in their home studio where they just were like, okay, I got to read this. Well, it was 2021. I bet you that's what happened. Maybe. Think about it. Maybe. That, if we're being yeah, generous. Maybe. Uh, it's just. Um, so this movie needs all the help we can give it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what else is there to talk about with this movie? Okay. Everything. Um, the other What's with the parakeet? Yeah, so the parakeet... Oh, it doesn't fit that was so random anything <laughs> about the environment. The evil spirit? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was... So the parakeet is Lucinda's, like, familiar, I'm guessing is the Which term. is the fairy, fairy godmother fairy in this godmother. one, I guess. Well, she's called just a fairy. She's not yeah. fairy. Rutherford is a fairy godmother. She's a fairy creature. Which has no wings. I, yeah. Nothing very like about her. Yeah. Just like a beautiful Russian queen. Yeah. yeah. Has a little nice not little a house. Fairy. And she lives in the mountains but doesn't really live in the mountains because it's not really a mountain that she's living in. It's more like a like a, like a a canyon that she mm -hmm. lives at the end of. <laughs> beautiful gardens and a parakeet. Yeah. A parakeet who threatens to kill everyone but he's a monster. And then he's like, oh, I must be losing my you know, whatever. I thought about the movie Rio from Disney that was just had this weird like, <laughs> yes. what is happening so this, this Yeah. So this movie is a mix of a lot of things. So it's got the Rio parrots. Mm -hmm. It's got the horse which feels like it's from Tangled. Or spirit. Or That's yeah, what I was thinking. Yeah, spirit. <laughs> oh. And so it can't really make, it to make up its mind who it wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like the kid Kid reminds me of like Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Uh, it's a lot of like piecemeal <laughs> ideas together. I like that deep cut. That. Yeah, it's <laughs> there <laughs> is the no Jiminy. Yeah, there no is no Jiminy cricket. There's none of it. Um, and he doesn't have a, his sidekick is the horse. And it's weird because the horse starts. Who sometimes is helpful, sometimes makes fun of him. Oh, let's use the word special. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. We were like Ooh, that that's moment. Bad. I was just like and, and, you. And Pinocchio's like teaching him how, how to, be to a dad, how to be a okay. That was the strangest story plot point, right? That I was just like, why are we doing this? Like Pinocchio's sidekick is supposed to be teaching Pinocchio, right? Not Pinocchio teaching his sidekick. I just was like, and why? then he's like, yeah, you can be my dad. Yeah, like what? what? And then they had this weird, like, where he's like, okay, we gotta do this, this. He's like, oh, we can do all that. He's like, and then you have to do everything. And he's like, nope, not doing that. Yeah. And it's just like, have we just tried to do his childhood in like 3.5 seconds? Because this is really terrible. I just, I, I don't even know. And then they, so they, like, they leave Geppetto. So, <laughs> so funny, funny story. Not really funny. It's all terrible. And we're all crying in our, in our, in our souls about this movie. So, Geppetto makes a, 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 what is he called? Um, Puppet. Puppet, thank you. That was a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm here on the podcast, everybody. <laughs> oh, this movie broke my brain. Okay, true story. Your idea. I, I went ahead and did my homework after watching this movie. Oh, I, I, I had a that. quiz. Oh, okay. And uh, I bombed it. I got 53. <laughs> 
pretty like, 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 lose like a 56 percent on my quiz <laughs> after watching it and thank god i can retake it <laughs> But no, do not watch this movie and yeah. then do any yeah. sort of thinking. Oh, so you took you took a quiz for school after yeah. this? Yeah, <laughs> like it's actually yeah. Like I like my, you get a trivia quiz Marcom based class. on the movie? <laughs> for, <laughs> no. I thought too. No, for, for a second, I thought you like I took a quiz on this movie and I no, no, no. So I thought too. I thought the same. I mean, dedication, Phil. Like, well, rock on! But oh my gosh, buddy, don't have to do don't have to do this to yourself. But you uh, took an actual like real world yeah, like, school and, quiz. Uh, like, <laughs> and I have been invited to be on PTK and stuff. Like, I'm yeah good with my work. Yeah. And so I took this quiz and got like a 56 and I was like, Pinocchio. <laughs> like, <laughs> you fried me, man. <laughs> Polly Shore did, did some damage to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, he, They all did. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just blame Polly. Yeah, it's everybody. Yeah. Even Napoleon Dynamite po- did some did some, did some some uh, wrong here. Yeah. So he makes a puppet. He calls him, Pin- he goes through this whole like naming nomenclature uh, and then calls him Pinocchio. And then he was like fixing um, her, the, 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 the Fury's like her staff or her little magic wand thing. Oh yeah. And he was like, "Oh, here you are. It's all fixed." And she's like, "Oh, thank you." Ah. And she's like riding away. And she's like, and the, the parrot's like, "Oh, are you gonna do something for him?" And oh yes, I will. And she just wing wings this little like spell out the back of the carriage as she's running and walking away. And then guess what? Pinocchio has life. So he falls Ish. off the chair first and closes his eyes. Right. It's not like he just like wakes up. Right. This is really awkward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's played for laughs. I'm sure it's just like, oh, was you? Oh, 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 you fell. And then he wakes up, and he's like, ah, 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 and he stumbles. Like first, so then dad passes out, and then he tries to stand up, and because he's not used to it, he stumbles around. Because hey, his legs he doesn't ever. But then he like stumbles around the kitchen for a little while in this weird like I don't even know. I just it was I literally my- couldn't even focus on the movie. <laughs> Like I was scrolling on my phone most of the time. I just like could not get engaged at all. Yeah, it was it was no good. So let's focus on the stuff that we sort of kind of enjoyed but really hated in the end. No, I got a uh, one thing really really bad. Okay, <laughs> hit us hit us, Phil. <laughs> the ending. Uh, why did they make Bella the detective's daughter? Like there was no. no what was the point? <coughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> it, 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 that question hurt me so hard I had to cough. Um, this movie so, hurt us all. I, like they could have cut that out and yeah. used that the money from that scene to make Pinocchio's <laughs> nose grow one time. Right for real. <laughs> I mean, jeez. Could, could you guys have done what you're? Po- you didn't Pinocchio, okay? Pinocchio's supposed to Pinocchio. This is not Pinocchio. Pinocchio's. You didn't Pinocchio. <laughs> Fail. Yeah. Bad. Bad. Bad directors. Um, so yeah, that was weird. So here's the thing about this movie is, is that we, we meet the, the, the people who are running the, the circus. Thank you. Circus <laughs> words today. I got nothing. <laughs> Pinocchio broke us all. Yeah. 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 Did some damage. So they go to the circus and we meet. So first of all, okay, let's, let's back up for a second. First of all, whatever his name is, Pinocchio's dad says, Geppetto. thank you. Geppetto. <laughs> Lord. Wow. <laughs> It was so forgettable. I can't remember any of the characters. Yeah. Like it, it destroyed my 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 That's Pinocchio my, mythology that I already had in my brain from years ago from the actual quality Pinocchio. Um, so Geppetto says, "Oh well, you're probably the only talking horse." So in this, so up to this point, we're like, oh, well, then he's the only talking animal. Like, no. that's it. That's all there is. Right. Then we get to the circus, and all the animals are talking. We've got a talking cat. we got a talking fox. The, we, they are the parakeet. The parakeet talks. I'm like, this is, what, you set your ground rules for a universe, and then you broke them. And then can you believe the cat gets, like, like freaked out by the wooden boy talking, but he's a cat that talks. <laughs> <laughs> you make a fair well, point. He shoots, he shoots he everything. Shoots <laughs> he shoots everything. But and it's just, not like it's just And like, at the same time, oh, shoots nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's he a misses. very fake scare. He's got the worst aim, yet he is able... He's like a stormtrooper. The only time he shoots is when he shoots Pinocchio. And when he, yep. he, 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 hits, he hits his mark there, but I guess because Pinocchio was standing still and he just was like, well, I'm going to shoot the kid, shoot the piano, put, shoot the puppet. Um, I just, oh my God. It's And the, so the idea behind the circus is they go to places and they rob them. But we don't really see that. They Thank don't see you. the robbing until the last right. possible yeah. last minute, half, and it's yeah. not yeah. explained. Well, and it's the, the way that they're when they sing that song, we're seeing them going and doing it. But those characters are still in the scene right. behind the curtain. So it's like, are we seeing a it's flashback? A weird flashback or something? Are you, did you not think to maybe front load this or load this in while we were kind of going through the story? Give us hints throughout the movie, right? Oh, people yeah. are upset because they're 
they're, they go home and they're reporting their things are stolen. Right. Which is what the detective should have been doing at the beginning of the movie. Being like, hey, we had reports of people stealing things. We're looking for some nefarious characters. They mm-hmm. don't even, they just say, oh, we're looking for some st- some just some unknown or, n- or you know suspicious looking characters. Some ne'er-do-wells. Some ne'er-do-wells. And, but like, it's also like... <laughs> Well, and then they're like, it has to be Pinocchio. He's the one doing it. Like, what? Yeah, he's the star of the talk. show, so Something's let's blame wrong him. here. How did, how did, I, I don't even know how they drew that con- connection. Thank I was, you. at I, some point, I was like laying my head on the couch because I was tired. And I was like, I just don't want to. And I was it. getting onto him hard, you guys. I was like, you are making us watch this film. Thank you. Don't you, you turn. You're <laughs> welcome. Oh, yeah. I looked at Zoe and I was like, and he grilled me about the Lion King <laughs> voice acting. I do. And I was like, you know, you're going to give you a hard time, you. right? <laughs> Vicky actually said, uh, Phil's coming for you. That's right. Yeah. I was like, he better not ever. Bring you, up the Lion King voice acting. You again. better, you, <laughs> you better don't. You're on, you're on restriction. You're on, you're on probation for Lion King mentions for like three episodes. <laughs> okay, minimum, minimum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you violate. I don't know what we're gonna do for you, but we're gonna do something mean and evil. Make you watch all kinds of terrible movies. Uh. Okay, so then we meet what's her bucket, the lady, the girl, the love interest. Bella. Who's here. Bella. But here's the thing. It's like it's not really. There's no chemistry. Yeah. There's nothing. And she's not the even whiniest, in, weakest. Yeah. Character. And she's not like she. There's no like. Oh, they're looking at each other with like puppy eyes. There's none of that. The animation. Her hair is, floats in weird ways. Oh. It does. <laughs> she's not a bad singer though. Yes, her one no. little song. That is one nice. song. The others yes. not so great. No, she was she. Her song. Her singing. Her songing. <laughs> Sing songing. <laughs> That's not how you song. <laughs> My gosh, <laughs> all the puns. Uh, so yeah, she had to, she sung well. Um, it just it was. What else is in this movie? Um, <laughs> the detective and his wandering around and finding things. With okay, his- this is something that I feel like it had in common with Arsenic and Old Lace. The only thing, <laughs> blumbering. Idiotic yeah. police forces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I did pay attention because I was like, he had his two lieutenants or whatever guys behind him. And I was always like, is there more of a story here? Are we going to get to know them more? No, we don't. Um, but he doesn't treat them, well, he doesn't treat them great, but he doesn't treat them badly. He just is kind of like, he, he he's their servant, whatever, and he just yells at him. Um, but he almost didn't even need to be in the movie. Kind of to your point, Phil, about the fact that we got this whole weird storyline where the love interest girl is actually the daughter of him and the bad uh, guy was like... So at the end, he's like, yeah, I paid somebody for your daughter who had kidnapped her so that I got her. Like, what? And it was just this weirdest moment of going, wait, who wrote and, this? And they put that scene in right after Pinocchio becomes a... Quote real boy, and oh. so no one. And so that they he's a real they boy. immediately <laughs> cut get out your to get hers too. Yeah, they immediately cut to us finding out about Bella being. Yeah, it was a swerve. Mm. And Poor I'm Pinocchio. like, I'm like, what and about Pinocchio? Was, <laughs> he's real now, and she's all ready to embrace this man she's never met. And I was just like, Yeah, I was. I thought that was weird like, too. Do you know I'm anything like, about like I don't know the foster system? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. That's not how that works. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah. apparently in the universe of, of, of Pinocchio, a true story, it does. It's, <laughs> it's not a true story. The audacity of going a true story. So it's like, it's a fairy tale. I'm like, okay, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No one a train to Noteville. <laughs> no. Nah. What else in this movie was just nuts? Everything was crazy. I didn't like any of it. Um, I have. To, I will say, I did enjoy hearing Polly Shore try to Pinocchio. I Aaron, know, I know. <laughs> it almost it almost became a game. It was just like okay. I'm just like Polly. Why couldn't you like try to sound different? And, and get like, this, try. get this. Polly, Zoe pointed this out. Polly Shore did another animated movie okay. that year. It came out like the next month. And um, what's it called? My Sweet Monster or yes. something. And he sounded and we, amazing. We watched the trailer for that, and I'm like, this actually looks like a good movie. Huh. Why didn't we watch this? And then I'm like, oh yeah, Pinocchio. Yeah, well, like a goofy like, movie. That yes. part is fantastic. Yeah. The leading tower of Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but I th- here's the thing. I think probably the director of that Jay's movie. Jay's <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's my favorite. It's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, don't apologize for your Google movie references. You, those are those are permitted. You are allowed. Throw the flag. Do whatever you got. Dance in the end zone. Like, whatever. I love that movie. But so, yeah. So, I think here's what I think it is. So, the movie you, you trailered. And like any movie you've seen Polly Shore in that's at least respectable, they probably had someone directing him and yeah. saying, hey, here's what I want to hear. 
well, here's what I want from well, you. Well, this movie is also by Lionsgate. Oh, uh, uh, okay. No, the, uh, they were both DreamWorks. That's why I was like, this well, is still so Well, still Lionsgate, cool. too. The what? It was uh, the Sweet Monsters, also Lionsgate. Oh, okay. It might be DreamWorks but, and Lionsgate. Yeah. Too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just like, that's so weird. They're made by the same company. It's but not again, this DreamWorks in Russia, adaptation. CF film or whatever it was. Yeah. When that came on right at the beginning, I was like, oh, boy. Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> but no, I think it's down to direction. I think it's down to directing. I think yeah. it's down to like script writing. But it's yeah. also like if, if he's got coaches, like voice coaches who are probably working with him in that movie. Yeah. Like, okay, hey, we're looking for this kind of thing. Hey, we're trying to get this, whatever. Um, I'm actually not wanting to watch that movie because that sounds like a solid Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it film. looks like a different take on Beauty and the Beast, yeah. I think. Okay. Ooh, mm-hmm. I'm, so. I'm open for that. Uh, me too. That could be different. Um, anything else you want to say about this movie besides why? Uh, Don't watch it. I want I, my money back. <laughs> yeah. My $4. Yeah, I we, want it yeah $4, $4 to rent it off of YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> YouTube probably, I want to refund YouTube. <laughs> Pauly Shore is going to get like 30 cents of that, poor dude. I know. That is sad. I just, I, there is like, there's no tension there's no, there's no like, sus, like worry. Oh, what's gonna happen to them? The worst is when like the cat shoots, shoots him, because he freaks, he's freaked out that there's a puppet, um, and he's probably, you know, Pinocchio falls and he's almost, he's like, like he's dead, and it's like, okay, but then he gets back up, and so there's like no consequence. Like, the so here's okay. This is what this is where I was gonna get cranky about. Oh no. So in the end of the movie, when they're in the the big top and the fire starts. Mm. Yeah. There's nothing like when they pull Polly Shore out. Everyone else is like sooty and like smoke inhalation and all that stuff. We're like he's gonna be scorched and he's, he's like nothing. He's just beautiful, <laughs> pretty little Pinocchio. Just none and none scorch out him. He's fine, but he's unconscious and probably dead. But now we don't want to show the burned. Like the <laughs> amount of fire that's in that big top uh, would have burned him to cinders. There well, the people no... were so hesitant to get away from that fire too. They're like, oh. oh. Oh, it's a fire. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, Must. and then Bella, after he saves her, like, oh, I got to go save him. Like, no, he just went through all that to save you. Like, right. get out I of wanted it. to pick her up and <laughs> shake her and be like, yeah. don't make a sacrifice for nothing. Yes. Yep. So he didn't, like, that That was the thing. It's like, look, if you're going to do, do Pinocchio, his kryptonite is fire. Yeah. But yeah. He does, he does, there's, that's the other thing is there's no real threat to Pinocchio throughout the whole movie. Yeah. There's not, like, the, the boss of the of the thing was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'll light you on fire if you don't do what I tell you to do. Or like, I'm going to, you know, you're, you're my guy. It's like, none of that. Oh, I'm going to put you, but none of that. Nothing happens. It's just while I'm wandering through this life, Polly Shore. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I need that. Every ah. one. That's an actual movie quote, everybody. Oh, yeah. No, he does that with the <laughs> horse. <laughs> when he's riding his horse, he's like, ah. And I'm like, what? He does that Who exactly. recorded that? Who approved that? Who edited that? And then put it in the movie and said, yep. That's what we want. <laughs> yes, Can we is please just like look up how much money this movie made? I'm curious. Oh, you know me and my Google. <laughs> I love I love to find me some Googled. And while he does that, I will say like I was reading through some of the uh, the reviews reviews, and <laughs> one of them was just one word, and it said Pinocchio. No, <laughs> so, I think there were about two or three reviews that were like, "This movie's amazing," and I'm like, "What? what? <laughs> Where did you find those?" <laughs> they, they, yeah, I. I, I I kind of read them all. I was oh, a little curious because okay. like, I was like, why, why? And I don't know if they were watching it for the pure heckling factor. <laughs> this is what? Okay, hold on. Are you ready I don't this? even think this no, is I'm like. Have you found a good review? I found the best review ever. Uh, oh I don't know where this where this is on Google. It says, Father, when can I leave to be on my own? <laughs> I've got the whole world. Z. Um, <laughs> voice acting is a joke that I love it so much. My uncle woke up from his coma just to turn this off. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I'll make sure to tell Jen. Wow, it put me, it that's put a me solid in a bird. <laughs> oh, man, I'll make sure to tell Jen. <laughs> make sure to tell Generation Alpha that this is the way this was life changing. <laughs> oh my god, that is my woke up from his coma favorite. to turn it oh. off. <laughs> that's how bad it is. Uh, let's see. I don't. Let's see if it can tell me how much money it made because I don't think there is actually um, negative. What? <sighs> I mean, there are bad movies, and then there are fun bad movies. And then this there's is Pinocchio. Not, this yeah, it is not fun. It doesn't bad. say which, uh, how it made. So the, yeah, the Russian. So the Russian actors and the English actors. Um, so Pinocchio, Tibalt, and Geppetto were different. So they had re- they had re- they had ne- they had U.S. redubs. Okay. Mm. And, and and international. So but then the rest of them from Bella on down, um, were all. Um, oh no, they were all Russian. There was no. There was no. There was nobody that got um, any of it. Okay. The Bolognese brothers, they didn't dub them over. I guess we didn't see the Bolognese brothers. Um, there was a policeman, apparently. We missed out on that. Vitaly Lyoko. Um, 
So yeah, it was a whole new U.S. cast for International. Interesting. Which is, <laughs> I would love to see the Russian version Me of this. Me too, almost. Good lord. In um, defense of Russian dubbing things over. Yeah. Um, making a switch to the Hobbit movies, I originally saw the first Hobbit in Russian when I was <gasps> overseas. And I thought the voice of the Great Goblin was better than here in the States. So when I came to the States, I was like, oh. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I guess it's a weird feeling because I don't always often feel that way. But that was one of those moments where I was like, oh, I like the Russian one better. All oh, right. Well. You're ready for the most like weirdest review I've ever read in my life from Common Sense Media said that. Oh, and this I, is the one I was telling you about. And I quote, there's also just enough humor and intrigue that the adults in the room might be able to tolerate yet another Pinocchio story. Though there are lessons of following your dreams and sticking up for friends, they aren't as obvious as they might be in other children's movies. There are many breadcrumbs spread throughout the film that come together in the serendipitous conclusion, so much so that it might just have viewers wanting to start it over and watch again. They got paid you, to you write made that. me. Oh God, they're laughing at my face, but that's the face I had the whole time watching the movie. Oh, what are they on? This is, what I was telling you about. This is one of those reviews where I'm like. What? We didn't watch the same movie, no. I don't think. <laughs> what humor, number one, besides Dude, just laughing at Paul the, Shore? The only time I actually laughed in this movie was during a sad scene. <laughs> <laughs> that's when we laughed. And she started crying at the weird part here. And I think that's yeah. when oh, she ran out oh leave God. me alone. I never want to speak to you again. And we both started cracking up. Do you remember it that? And I'm like, yeah. Dramatic. And I'm like, oh. And how dare they steal that scene from Pokemon, oh, the movie? Because okay. at the end of that movie, Ash gets turned to stone, okay. and all the Pokemon cry on him and bring him back. Oh, and I'm like, okay. you guys are not doing <laughs> Oh, we were heckling this, like, how's it going to come back to life? Oh, Dad's going to cry on him. No, it's going to be her. Oh, it's going to be a kiss. And it's like, I was like no, it's going to be her tears. We yeah. were predicting. It was, it was so, it, the ending was just like, so like, okay, here we go. Let's do this. Let's get over with. Blah, 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 I was blah, blah. like, thank God it's over. Yeah. <laughs> The whole point was about him coming, becoming a real boy, and then yep. no one cared. Yep, that was it. Yeah. All right, we're moving, we're moving on now. Moving on to other things in life. I was like, I don't know. I was half expecting like there to be like a wedding scene later yeah. like, oh. between the two, and that yeah. that would that would really have amped it up. Sure. But I was just like, no. Nope. So then, but I do love how the fact that, and so here's a, okay. So that there is the there is the kind of ending where the policeman is now the ringmaster, and the whole family's together, and it's happy, joy, joy, love, love. And I'm just like, okay. That was no. a Ren and Stimpy reference. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that is that is a deep cut actually. I, I don't, happy, happy, joy, joy. Yeah, this movie is not any of those things. <laughs> no, this movie will make you just want to be like, um, I need to talk to somebody because I darkness, darkness, dread, dread. <laughs> yeah. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Why? I need counseling now. Yeah, I need counseling. Oh, dang, <laughs> all of it coming from I, our I'm counselor. gonna bring down chocolate when we take a break. It's part of oh, my plan. Yes. We need it. We yeah, need chocolate there we sure. go. There you go. Okay, so if you really want to punish yourself, and you need, you need if so if you're like. If you're like one of those fundamental religion practitioners and you need to like flay yourself, you know, you don't have to do that anymore. You mean like the monks that hit their boards? Yeah, yeah. Python? You can just watch guys. Pinocchio, A True Story. <laughs> basically. And you can, you basically will see the light. You'll be like, dear Lord Jesus, I will never do this again. If you're a masochist, so you like yeah. inflicting pain on yeah. yourself. Yeah. Watch this, this movie. This will test your limits. You'll be like, I'm never doing this again. I'm going to live a straight and narrow. And I... Never again, ever, ever. They should have paid us to watch. <laughs> yeah, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I paid you with spaghetti. I did. I and garlic bread. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of you true. paid us with lemonade. Okay, I guess. that's fair. We it balances out in the end. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna take a short break because apparently we need chocolate to soothe our souls. I, I do. When we come back, <laughs> it's Five Nights at Freddy's, the most expected, most awaited, most exciting for ah! moment Five Nights at of pe- some people's lives. Not mine, but we'll talk oh. about it. We have a lot of things to discuss, um, and some things I have actually praised about this movie, and other things we got we got we, we got to talk. So strap in, uh, oh, actually unstrap. Sorry, get out, get out of your seat, unbuckle, um, p- put the car in, and park before you do any of this. Of course, step out of your vehicle um, and go get a snack. We'll be right back here on Nerds by Screenlight. Be back in a sec. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Nerds by Screenlight. My name is Aaron. I am Phil. I'm Zoe. I'm Vicky. And we are uh, launching into the, the second part of our podcast, which is a discussion review, whatever you want to call it, of uh, the film Five Nights at Freddy's, which, at recent, Freddy's. which released in the last week or so. Actually, released 
Friday. <laughs> Friday. It's been out. Yep. It's been out for like three days, and so and you'll have to you have to fill me in fill in as I leave out stuff. How long ago did the game came out? Came out. How long ago did the game come out? Oh my gosh, uh, it's been a hot second actually. Yeah. Ho, ho. Quick. Google. Hold on, Google search. Quick Google. FNAF one release date. 2014. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and the, and these games it. came out rapidly after yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah. It was, yeah, they were they were really they were really fast. Um, so it's based on that, and the, so the game series, the game came first, then the game series, then there was books, and then there was all kinds. I'm sure there was comic books somewhere in the world. It's a media empire. Yes. It is a, it is abs- and it is absolutely powered by young adults and teenagers. Um, it is an absolute. Um, it's it kind of. <clears throat> I think it restarted kind of the horror genre in gaming, but also the horror genre in like books and stuff like well, that. Well, it was very unique. Mm-hmm. There was not a horror game that like this before so this. Talk now there's talk to the mechanics billions. of that game, of how that game works. So the first game, uh, and most of the games, you're stationary. You cannot move. Mm-hmm. And you're either a security guard or in one of the games, you're like a kid trapped in his bedroom. or Yeah. But uh, these animatronic things, like ch- picture Chuck E. Cheese characters, are trying to kill you, and you mm-hmm. don't know why. Mm-hmm. And the games, and the only way that you can save yourself is either by shutting them out, not letting them in, or some other weird mechanic. Like flashing your flashlight or something, or putting on a mask. But the lore of these games is very hidden. It doesn't explain anything to you. Nope. If you go to YouTube and you type in game theory and look at Matt Pat, who is in the movie, by the Yay. way, cool little Easter egg, okay. uh, look up his um, playlist of all of his theories that he has done on Five Nights at Freddy's. There are like over 40 videos huh. of just trying to figure out what this story is. Okay. Huh. So. It is a, it is a, when it came out, people, people did YouTube videos of it. They live streamed it. They also recorded episodes. Like, did you make it through? But it, so it re- so it started out this idea of you had a time limit, so you had to get through several hours, yep. and the clock would tick and everything like that. Six a.m. Yep, and you get through six a.m. Now, after that, games copied that theme or adapted that theme, where you had games where you played like running around outside a facility or whatever, and you had until six a.m. when it would all come back, when everything would come back online again. So, um, put up my notes so we can start. So. <sighs> I want you to say one good thing first. <laughs> it was a movie. <laughs> oh my god! I had Hold to have been on. Than okay, I, all right, all right, all right. I had to see what Zoe would do. Come on. <laughs> she, she, she. Was, I will throw this mic. In. <laughs> she, there will be violence, and you'll need to call an ambulance. Um, so here's the thing. Overall, and and heads up, if you're listening to this right now, there are going to be spoilers, 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 spoilers everywhere. So if you haven't seen it, don't listen. Yeah, don't further. stop now. And then maybe I'm sure come. all you fans have seen it. Though. Oh yeah, I'm sure they've because it's on Peacock. Mm-hmm. And like, is, you can stream it right right now. And if you're someone like me that horror is hard for you, I feel like spoilers could be good. Yeah. Oh no, trust yeah. me. Yeah, you'll you'll we'll t- we're going to tell you everything. Um, yeah. And so editor an editor's note or a show note. Um, Vicky did not watch this movie. Um, I re- recommended that she not, um, and I was glad that I did. Because holy sweet baby Moses, this one's intense. I do tend to go toward nightmares if it's scary. Yeah, enough. Uh, yeah, that's not good. So, uh, in order t- to avoid her waking up in the middle of the night and going, ah! um, <laughs> just be like, Aaron, I can't go back to sleep. <laughs> like you watch the movie, but <laughs> they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> <laughs> they're adorable. It's uh, so the movie. The premise is, is is that he is an out of he's he's constantly having to change jobs, um, and Mike. he ends up yeah Mike he ends up at this whatever at this at this at the, at the five minutes at Freddy's, um, and it was interesting how it didn't follow the like it followed a little bit of the hours like it showed you the clock, but it was more spread out over time yeah mm. um, it was I think I think it felt like it was five nights that he spent there yeah. maybe yeah it was it was so it was exactly those so I that, wish they actually had a counter that said like night yeah, yeah, one night, one, night two you know, that would have been cool or that's kind of like the game it yeah. does that or he would have been like hey it's Hey, Monday, whatever, Tuesday. Um, so the music intro, here's what I feel. And I have not played the game. I've watched it on YouTube, so I don't know if this was an intentional or if it was just incidental. Um, but the music theme starts out really, really trying to be Stranger Things. It felt like dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. And then it starts into its own theme. It's just like, okay, look, y'all, y'all, y'all. You don't get to ride those coattails anymore. The coattail, the coattail ride is going to be over with the next season. 
Just get rid of your Stranger Things needs and just let go. Be your own. Be your own person. Well, that's that whole sequence with like the Atari graphics yeah. type thing. That's straight out of the games. Okay. That so this is why we have Phil and Zoe here because they are they are more fans of the material, um, <laughs> which means Zoe has to reach over the table to hit me. <laughs> Phil doesn't have very far to go, so nope. he's just, I think he's already upset with you about Pinocchio. Yeah. I would. We've, <laughs> we've, we've already triggered Phil. It's just a matter of lighting the fuse, and there's going to be a WWE brawl in the basement here, studio in the basement studio. I am a pacifist. <laughs> I won't whack you. Awesome. He'll just he'll just plot my doom somehow. Yeah. I will glare into your soul. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with, with the lasers of rage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good talk. So, <laughs> so it starts out with that, and I, as as a gamer, I appreciated it. Here's so here's the thing, and this is this is me me and my movie, whatever you want to call it. Either you've got good credits, a good opening credits way, or you don't. Mm-hmm. And I feel that this was just a waste of time. Now, obviously, it's to give like honor to the game and to bring to to reference that. But it just felt like, okay, just get through the movie already, please. Well, that intro, it does ser- serve a purpose. It actually shows that there is a person yeah. inside of one of the suits luring kids to a back room. Yeah, I didn't really pay attention. Well, that's what it was but showing you. Like, <laughs> the whole premise. <laughs> Here's why I say that. Both of them are just mad at me right now. It's not going to get any better, unfortunately. Well, the whole time feels like Aaron's going to tear you apart tomorrow, and I'm like, well, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> well, because... I'm watching this movie, and as a fan of FNAF, yeah, and also like a fan of movies, mm. I can critique this movie. Yeah, there are things in it that I'm like, it's a little odd. Mm. Why they do that? There are some things where, yeah, and I have a feeling. We, I'm hoping we're going to agree on it. We'll see as we go. But here's the thing: I love a movie that just starts off and goes. Yeah, and it also doesn't use exposition or doesn't use front loading of that exposition. Right. This movie felt like starting with this intro with the, with the credit sequence. It felt like it really, 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 really leaned heavily into that, and it was so. It was it's, it in so on like the show versus tell argument, right? So if you're gonna tell me, just like that's really boring. Like it's like, oh well, then there was this guy named Freddie, and he had this thing, and he had a shop, and he did this. So thing. don't tell. Yeah. yeah, and so you're telling me, and I'm like, okay, I'm already bored already. Show me something exciting. Um, and so what we what we tell writers, and we t- tell people as a teacher is. Show it to me through the characters going through the scene, or experiencing something, or seeing, or hearing something, or interacting with something that pushes the story forward. This movie leans really heavily on tell, and I would have preferred that the movie start with the scene of the of the, the original security guard, which we see obviously when mm-hmm. he's like running and things are happening to him. I would have preferred that, and when they when the thing goes to kill him or whatever, then it cuts to him waking to our to our character to Mike waking up. Don't give me the intro sequence. Just like, take take me in the terror of that guy, and then plop. Here's Mike. Let's go. There there are fans of the the game screaming at you right now. So, uh, <laughs> you basically there is not a guy a there is not a guy named Freddy who owns a restaurant. I know. I'm just, I was it's, being... It's William Afton. <laughs> Freddy, is, Freddy is one of the animatronics. Yes. So, Fre- so yeah. let's, let's be... Let's guys, be, be nice to Aaron. Let's be, Bring <laughs> it on. Let's go. Who is played by Matthew... Lillard. Okay. Lillard. Oh, I have so who much... Who I love I have so much from to say, Scream. I have so much to say about his acting in this in this movie. Um, I know. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Oh so, Most of his voice lines come from the game. Yes, they do. So, so you can't hate too much. And he so, does them perfectly. So here, carefully. Here's, here's the thing about having a game, movie that's based on a game, is the danger is, is that you end up having to do so much, I don't want to call it fan service, but you end up having to have so many elements that your movie is hamstrung. That you can't, you have to do this one thing or these things so that it, it still stays true to the original material. What I felt like, we'll get back to the rest of this, with Matthew Lillard, number one, it was like the way the movie had him talking and it was phrasing. I was like, he's the bad guy. I don't even have to guess. Yeah, right off the bat. Yeah, and, and I could tell that from the because, trailer. Yeah, I could tell too. But that, for me, that's disappointing yeah. because now I know what's going to happen. You've telegraphed it. Because st- here's the, what's, what's signaled to me is he's like, I can't get your job anywhere. And he just stands and he's like, wait, wait, wait. I got a he, job he for you. He realizes his, his name. last name. Oh. And then he's like, wait, I do have a job for you. Right. And that unfortunately goes without our knowledge. They never make that connection with the last name at any point. And you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. They don't say his last name until, until the very the end. end. Okay. And at the, but at the end, but it's, there's no payoff for that. Yeah. We don't know his the last name association. 
we don't have that information. Right. And so we're just left to go, You like he's, he, he said he almost said his last name, but he didn't. It's like, okay, here's the deal. I get you were trying to be like, you're trying to, ooh, the last name means something. Then give it to us. Give us that information and then start to unfold his story when he does the flashbacks, when he flashes back to his brother getting taken and all those things. That's when we go, oh, now I get it. But they didn't, they left it just hanging there. There was no mention of his last until the end. The pay, and yeah. that payoff was too far. It was too far for when it was mentioned. By the time it came back around, I was bored. I was like, all right, I know, like, we've already seen everything. We've seen the, the, the bad guy come out of his suit and all that stuff. It's, there's, there's no payoff. It's just like, okay, cool, that's an interesting thing. Moving on, we're into the fight. Like, and I think the reason for that is because Scott Cawthon is a troll. The creator of Fun Arts at Freddy's. Well, that's he, a, those, he, those, he has those several. Are best, those are the best kind of filmmakers, the trolls. He has se- he has several characters that have the same ni- same name. Like there are two Mikes mm-hmm. in Fun Nights at Freddy's. You got Mike Schmidt, yeah. which is our main character here, and there's also a Michael Afton, which is William Afton's brother. Which if there are sequels to this movie, I'm sure we will get introduced to. And I'm sure we will. Yeah. Given that this movie made like what ten million dollars, it, it broke records. Yeah. It was it was. Um, the highest grossing movie, horror, horror movie, movie, directed by a woman. Yep. Because Ooh. Barbie got... Yeah, Barbie got there too. Right away. <laughs> yeah. So you got to say horror movie, yeah. Yeah. directed yeah. by a woman, but yeah. So, all of that to say, like, I get what they were trying to do, but there's these, there's these points of just being like, <sighs> you just, no, why did you do that? So yeah, no, I knew, like, and I was just like, because you don't bring on a, an actor like Will, Matthew Lillard. But you, you can do it you can do it in ways that we don't think it's him. Like here's okay, so this is my perspective. Again, Matthew Lillard, great actor, cool dude, whatever. Here's what you do to make sure that we don't think it's him until the end, where you have him as like the supervisor of the office. And so he's working with somebody who's just a whatever, but you hear his voice. And you hear him on the phone or you hear him in the background being like, Hey Marcy, are you done with that person yet? We gotta get the next person in there. And you not kind of get oh like I hear that and I know that voice from somewhere. Where's that voice from? And the movie, slowly but surely, you get more of his voice until, like, she say, he says, hey, like, every time he's gone to the office, he's been like, hey, who is that guy? Oh, that's my boss, Mr. Whatever. And he goes, well, I've never heard that name before. Oh, I don't know. And maybe he ran into it at the, Fre- at the Freddy's, whatever. And then at the end of the, at the film, when it's the, it's the, like, when Vanessa realize, makes the confession, oh, it's my dad, who's your dad? But da da da, and you go, oh God, he's had access to my records. He's seen everything about me. He knows my story. That's why I got this job. That's why I'm like that would have more punch. Because then Matthew Lillard appears, and you go, and he and he, uses, and he says a line that he used it with Marcy in the office, like, hey Marcy, why is it taking so long? He's like, hey Marcy, why is it taking so long? And he stares at Mike from across the room. Mike goes, oh no, and it's like, game on. Now you know we're in trouble because the dude has the dude knows everything about Mike. Mike knows nothing about this dude. He knows he's Vanessa's dad. Dad, like that was so much more potential, so much more boom than just this. Okay, it's Matthew Lillard. Fine, we got it. Well, in in the game, it is just the voice. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a guy on the phone that calls you every day. Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah. So he did that because pr- he he, get, he did hello, do the voice he did very it good. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that has to be him then, yeah. like immediately. Yeah. So it's just it's it's frustrating because like there's that mo- moments where I'm just like okay I, I get it but you could have done this so much better. I will say Mike should have been in jail before he ever made it to that scene. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the opening scene. Um, so the Abby is the kid. She's a, an His all right sister, a, Mike's an sister. all right actress. Yeah. Like she's not she's not lighting the world on fire, um, but she's not terrible. Like she's she's doing a good job. She's pulling it together. Um, the dream theory the dream theory book. <sighs> it's too much on the nose. I was just like okay. All right, what are you trying to do here, movie? Like, I get it, whatever. Um, well, and- that was a little Easter egg because when everyone was doing all the theorizing about the oh, lore, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. thought that hey, this is all a dream, dream of theme. Okay, so they a little, a little in. bit of it. I think, I think if the book had just been sitting there or even reading it and they didn't talk about it, I'm okay with that. Like, oh, cool, interesting dream theory. That's a toss away. But you, when he starts being like, hey, this is an interesting theory, blah, 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 I'm like, okay, take your hand off your nose. Let's, let's not doing this anymore. I'm done with this. Um, and then he punches a dude. Yeah. Well, no, okay. wallops him. It, it does make sense later on why he got so triggered, and we'll let Zoe explain that one if you want. He Oh, well, I mean, he gets triggered because he thinks this guy is, like, kidnapping T- this child, yeah. which is, like, triggering him from his brother being right. taken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I would say that it went a little over the top with yeah, him. Like, yeah, he literally he <laughs> that man. Yeah. yeah. In front of everyone. Yeah. yeah. So the thing about this is, is that this movie wants me to like Mike, 
it is very hard for me to like him in this movie. And even towards the end, I just am like, dude, you're mean to your sister. You really don't seem to care about her beyond just like whatever. There's no like actually like I don't get the sense that he wants her. Like there's not that like man. She just like because he, he has a conversation with a social worker, and she's like, oh well, you're always in her pictures. Nine out of yeah, ten. Yeah, she times. loves you. You're her but favorite. But here's the thing: she doesn't show that either. We don't get a sense of their relationship having anything other than, oh, I'm just here and I hate you. Well, I you annoy me because you take so much work of being a child. It's just it's it's like it's very. There's no like. I, I know I can't go anywhere else, but I still hate you, and I'll, I'm 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 glad that you have me, but I hate you. Like there isn't that mo- that that kind of unraveling of the conversation where it's like, oh well, she's she's miserable, but she's happy to have a home, but she's like she struggles with loving or hating him. None of that comes out in those conversations, and I'm just like, well, how does she feel about him? And she she st- the, the, however they instructed her to play it or however she was written, I was just like, I don't care about her, like, and I don't care about him. And I know that's weird, but it's like, well, why should I? He molly a dude, like <laughs> painted hit the floor with his face, didn't get arrested, yeah. didn't go to jail, didn't get like a ticket, nothing. Dude's just, yeah, whatever I went. I went home and I lost my job. And then I went to the office to get another job. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> Yeah. How has he managed? And I like I get it because he's like, well, you've had this job for two, like a week. You had this job, and it, it's like it's to create the idea that he can't sleep well, or that he doesn't, he needs, he doesn't, he's not, he's not stable. But it's also like, if dudes, if this is happening here, I can't imagine his history is full of anything but more violence. And so, how is this dude not in jail? Why? Like, mm. yeah, and he sleeps all the time because he he thinks that it, he in his somewhere in his locked away memory. Yeah. He can. F- he knows who right, he kidnapped his brother. Yeah, his brother, so yeah. he wants to dream and yeah. see that, like, because yeah. he wants to find who did it. Which the sister has no, like, really doesn't know her parents yeah. or that brother at all. Right, yeah. and so there is that disconnect. Yeah. Um, which mm, it's interesting. I just like she starts to warm up more towards the middle of the movie, mm-hmm. but then it's just like, ah, I just I. It's, I don't think it's the fault of the actress because obviously kid actors, you want to be gentle in how you criticize. Um, but it just doesn't feel like this was the right fit for her um, because it just feels she's distant consistently. And maybe that was the intent. Like, we want to keep her distant. We don't, want, we, don't, we don't want the audience connecting to her. But here's the deal. I got to connect with somebody in this movie. And I didn't connect with that. Nope. Like, I didn't connect with Mike. I didn't connect with his, his sister. What about the animatronics? <laughs> I didn't. They annoyed me. Oh. I, so here's the thing, like I because I know I've I've watched the game. I know that they're not great, like they're 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 evil. That was a whole other thing, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, he can't do knights. He says that um, we don't we get the idea that he can't do knights because he has to, he sleeps, he has to take medication for it. Yeah. But we don't really get the insidious nature of why he can't do knights. It it seems to turn out that he just he just can't. Like it's not like he's got something. Well, there is something wrong with him, but it's not like oh when I when I stay awake at night. I have nightmares. There's none of that. It's right. you know, you're probably a functional it's, human. It's all because he just wants to sleep, right? And so, so it's it's not a it's not a like because that's what I was thinking. It's like oh, he can't work nights. Oh, it's something scary. There's there's something insidious here. Nope, just because he sleeps. I'm like okay, well I still now I just don't like you anyway because now like like again from the 40, 41 year old perspective, right? When you, I can't do nights. Well, why not go sleep all the time? Well, then put on your big boy pants, please, and get yourself together. Like you know how like that. And I know that this is a game based on a movie based on a game and whatever. But it just like as a character, I'm like, dude, I don't care. See, I guess I just wrote it off as he has to be home with her. But he has a babysitter. Yeah. Who is obviously spying on him to yeah. get information? That whole whole that whole storyline. <laughs> It's not the same as the parrot or like the guardian being there having a babysitter. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where just like. No, his thing was like, I can't work nights because this is when I can sleep and yeah. I use my sleep time to try to figure out who took right. my brother. I guess we just, we don't get an explanation outright from him because he doesn't. Until have, way later. Yeah. And that's the unfortunate bit is there is sometimes where you need to front load some stuff. You need to show me or at least just tell me like, I can't work nights. Well, why not? He doesn't ask that question. Well, what's wrong? Oh, I just, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at. It. I'm not, okay, look. Then if he says, hey, look, if it's just a matter of sleeping, I'll get you some energy drinks, like whatever you need. We'll get you, we'll get you up, we'll get you working, so you can make it through the night. Well, I got my, my, my sister. I need to. I'll find someone to take. Like there could have been ways to paper over that and be like, oh, okay, like he's gonna work on it. He's, but he's just like, I can't do nights. It's like, 
it just it felt clunky. Um, the I have a job for you, and you just about to send him on his way. That was like mm, 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 mm. red flag, red flag. The one thing about this movie, camera work is exceptional. That's Whoever was really behind cool. the camera on this movie, which I'm gonna find out who you were, because it was real. I was like, there were moments of genuine being like. Ooh, okay, that's not bad. I like that. I like, like that. Even shadow. seeing like the little shadow. Or yes. Yeah. That was that was there was some really. And you got to pay attention to the backgrounds. Yes, mm-hmm. that I appreciated. The detail there um, was exceptional. Uh, let's do cast and crew because I am very curious to see who who they're um, who. Hold on, cast directed by obviously Emma Tammy. I wonder what else she's done. Let's go like that real quick before I look at anything else. Where's my cinematography? Ah, Lynn Moncrief, who I have no idea who that is, but I'm about to find out. So Lynn Moncrief, her, his, sorry, (laughs) his, uh, he is known for uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, The Passenger in 2023, They, Them, Vengeance, so nothing that I'm familiar with. The Wall of Mexico, yeah, there's not a lot of movies here that I know. So this is probably his first big, like, Big movie. That's um, cool. The passenger um, is who is did who? Uh, yeah, it's, this is not. Let's see who's in this movie. The passenger stars. Yeah, no, it's his first big movie, so that's exciting. That and his exciting. talent shows. Like I was like, that was the one thing I made a note about routinely. It's how they framed the shots and how they had the how the camera walked with him and sometimes where it was following him. Um, it did some really, really, really cool Even stuff. Even like some good zooming in. Yeah. <coughs> The other thing this movie did really well, and again, you're asking me to find good things, the slow revelation about his brother, but also the revelation of what hap- what the children and what happened to them, that was done well. Which I, is, I can't believe you didn't bring up the practical effects. Practical effects. There's little to no CGI. That's awesome. The animatronics are real They're animatronics. Real. That's Ooh. legit. Okay. That's legit. I was wondering. I did, didn't seem like, because I, I didn't make any notes about bad CGI. Um, everything seemed natural, so suspension of disbelief worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this the 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 way that they layered that story in there, that worked for me. It was disturbing and unpleasant and uncomfortable, but it was meant to do that. It was yeah. meant to be like, huh! um, and it 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 is very. I like how they they kind of continue to go back to it, and and it wasn't just a moment like, oh, we're just going to use this as a plot device to do whatever. Right. No, they kept going back to that scene at the picnic table. And he would see all the kids there, and then he wasn't really sure what was going on. I wasn't sure what was going on. So the plot, the, the pl- one with the ears, that's yes. how you figure it out. Yeah. So that, <laughs> like that, but that was that was a cool reveal yeah. because we didn't know. I didn't know what was going on until that moment. Going, oh no, these are the kids possessing the yeah. right. <laughs> and and then and then the more the more unpleasant and 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 challenging revelation is it wasn't just their ghosts. It's their bodies. It's are in their there. bodies are in those puppets as well. And that all right. Someone who hasn't seen the movie, what kids are possessing so animatronics? So the animatronics are 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 be in the in the game. They act on their own. The game they they are able, they stalk you. They chase you throughout things or whatever. And so in the movie, the revelation, the first revelation is, is that it's the ghosts of the kids that were kidnapped before that they're that they have possessed the animatronics and are moving them around. The more distress distressing reveal comes. When I think it's yeah, Vanessa or whatever her name is, she reveals it's not just their ghosts, it's their bodies inside there. Yeah, as well. so the way these animatronics work is they're designed to be both standalone robot like animatronics, but they can also be worn as a suit. And there's like a spring lock mechanism inside of them that can crush you and kill you. Yeah. And so there's a serial killer guy, William Afton, kidnaps all these kids, stuffs their bodies in these suits, and kills them. Yeah. And now they haunt the suits. And like in some of them, you can literally see that like there is a person inside of the suit. Yeah. So So it makes it very sad for the kids. Like that's why I'm like, the kids are cute. And like it actually gives them more like childlike features that you don't see in the game. Like, oh, they are just kids. Yeah. Like whenever they meet uh, Abby, like their their child. Like they build a fort together. And it's like. Like she becomes friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. That was a. The best word I can I express is like which I I didn't I love for a that FNAF scene. movie for a, a horror movie I did not like that <clears throat> it was I wish it was scarier to be honest so here's the thing I I probably would agree with Phil for the first time in a while which is nice <laughs> to, to have I mean, he is blocking you in the room 
Um, I hold the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it that whole interlude is weird tonally. It's a tonally odd choice, and I get why they chose it because it does bring some levity, and it does. But it but it it sucks you out, and it, it was at that point that I was like. I think I made the note of like, what is going on? Like, what is what is happening? Um, I feel like it shows their humanness and that they aren't their just humanity, these, yeah. yeah, evil. Like, they're really being influenced by yeah Matthew by evil. Yeah, yeah. so it just it, and, yeah. And I'll say, um, usually I hate jump scares in horror movies. I think it's just lazy. Yeah, and like you know, but it's in Five Nights at Freddy's the games. That's all, all it is. Scares. There is no gore in the games. It's just jump scares. Mm. Yeah. This movie could have used like, I think there's only like two jump scares in the whole movie. Yeah. There's not and a lot. I, yeah, because I was like keeping track. I was like, I had a little list of like how many times Aaron would have pooped himself. <laughs> <laughs> it was only like twice. Thanks for that. So, <laughs> We're like, I wonder if he's fast forwarding right now. <laughs> yeah. There was there I was, was like, there was fast forwarding. I did not I did not enjoy. Uh, that fast forwarding. I'm trying to look at yeah PG-13. So PG-13, which means the violence had to be down a little bit. You couldn't have as much. There as is you. there is one really nice one that I was like, oh okay, we're doing this now. Yeah, I probably fast forwarded through that. Um, so so I think it's kid friendly except for like maybe two scenes. Yeah, honestly. Well, so, and, so, so did you fast forward through the whole break in scene? Um, I because that's the mo- where most of it is. I fast forwarded through when I saw them getting get atta- going to get attacked. Okay. I was like, and and because in my head I'm like, oh, here we go. It's gonna happen now. Here's we're gonna get the fun part. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so you didn't see Chica's cupcake destroy this <laughs> this guy's face? No, I did not see that. <laughs> I missed that part. And that was that was sadly in my rearview mirror, or happily in my rearview mirror. Um, yeah. So the the whole like where they build a fort together and all that, it just feels off. Yeah. Um, like in the comedy where like the one of the one of the animatronics like falls over and they're like oh are you okay and he puts his thumb up like this yeah I'm just like I'm sorry I liked it I mean it's cute in the middle of all the blood and guts that we're about to see like because and you gotta think like with playing the game you don't get this whole story up front right like you have to play all of it to like even get a glimpse of and it. you still yeah. won't know yeah you gotta go watch three hours of Matt Pat's videos like on much. YouTube. Right. So to me, this like actually gives a backstory that everybody yeah. can know now. <laughs> There's actually a video, a YouTube video and it's like the simple story of five nights at Freddy's and it is nine hours long. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's your, so there you go. There's, there you can watch that and fast forward or not even watch that if you don't want to. So yeah, that was a weird, a weird tone kind of scene. Um, so then like, Abby takes the vest she wants to go with. Like, this is the moment where she takes his security vest and she's like, oh, I want to go with you. I want to go with you. And it was like, oh, so she actually likes him and wants to spend time with him. We haven't gotten any of that. And suddenly she's just like desperate to hang out with him. And he's like, and I'm just like, where was this before? Give us a, a slow build. Don't just suddenly jerk us out and be like, oh, ha, ha, ha. she does like him, sort of, kind of. Um, I said they don't make her, they don't do a great no, no, no job of this. Um, well, they kind of give her this perception that she's like mentally ill or like yeah and i'm like no that's a, just just a child a child right. has imaginary friends yeah which in yeah. this case she's actually seeing the ghost of right. the kids right and a child likes to draw mm-hmm. right i mean there was nothing that seemed like she was right. had any mental issues at all yeah. in my opinion it just it felt clunky and i i mean again i it is what it is, but it's like you could have. Like, this would have been so much better with a different voice act, a different like child actor, probably, and maybe some different choices in the writing of how we pulled them together. Um, you do know they like wrote the, like three different versions. Yeah, th- th- Scott rewrote the <laughs> script rewrote like four it, or five yeah. times. Okay, <laughs> so I, I, I'd be curious to see the other versions. <laughs> Me too. Because I don't know. I mean, it's not bad. It's not a terrible movie, but there's moments from just like yeah, that was a choice. You okay, made. I would let me get your opinion on this one. Okay. So Vanessa, the cop. Why is she in this movie? Because, she, oh my gosh, I was annoyed. She is just there to exposition dump you. And I don't like it. But that's not even what I'm going to okay. talk about. Like, we okay. get, we know that's why she's there. Right. And whatever. The whole time when Vanessa and Abby and Mike are all in together at yeah. Freddy's, yeah. they're having a good time. Yeah. Until, like, Vanessa goes into the back room and 
she obviously knows about the place. She's yeah. telling Mike things about this place yeah. that he doesn't know. So she's very familiar with it. Yeah. She's familiar with the animatronics. Yeah. And later on, we know that she's familiar with why they are like yeah. that. So they're like having a good time. And she's like encouraging uh, Abby to like play yeah. with them and yeah. stuff. Then after that scene in the storage room, uh, her and Mike go outside and she she flips on a dime. Yeah. You bring Abby back here again, I will I'll shoot, shoot you. you. So that's an actual and my line. My face went, "What?" Yeah, no, I'm like, that was it. That was my breaking point. I was like cuz here so here's the thing about characters. Characters need to be consistent, right? You had got to write your characters with consistency because as a watcher, be it with a fandom or a movie series or whatever, we're going to figure out whether or not you've done a good job with your character writing and your character acting. That moment was like, there has got to be more to this. It's like there's some missing scenes or something. Right. Because it was like, we're like, and here's the thing. Cause here she gets like, when she goes for the guitar, like it's Vanessa's fault that this happened. Yeah. Vanessa's the one like, Oh, play with them, play with them, play with them. When she knows that if anything, if she like, she knows what's going to happen. And yet she encourages it. Also throwing this out there. Mike knows what happens. Cause he did the same thing. Like I think the first night he, saw it do that yeah he saw it yeah but, <laughs> so there's a lot of but he was too busy talking to vanessa to pay attention right. to abby <sighs> and here's the thing i think what they try and do is they try and make them a couple but they have no chemistry together mm -mm. yeah and they're like i'm just like okay cool like she's all right he's all right what's stopping them chemistry apparently and the ability to like show us that oh these like whatever the other thing that bothered me about vanessa is, is that she didn't answer his questions and he, he kept asking her, and at no point did he go, okay, I need you to leave, because you're not helping me. Get the heck out. She also does not do her job. No. Yeah. So Because Mike finds the bodies of the uh, break-in people Yeah. in a back room. Nothing's said about it. The, the cops aren't called. Yeah. Nothing. Well, and on June, or on Julie, whatever her name is. Dies. Yeah. And th then the end of the movie, I'm like expecting there to be something about that. No, nope. it's never brought up again. Nope. She's 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 good. She's, I do agree with that part. She was only the 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 aunt the aunt was only there to pressure Mike. Yeah. And to get him to get a job. Yep. She was a MacGuffin. And after they did that, it's like let's kill her and forget about her. Yeah. It was the biggest disservice f to anything. Th Another part that bothered me is when he's getting chased down and he's about to get like murdered. And then all of a sudden, he pops up at the outpost. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, Zoe, I was like, wasn't he already there? No. So he was in the hallway running, and the monster was going to eat him. And, <laughs> and then I thought, oh, he's dead, because we heard the... Bah! I was like, okay, he's dead now. Like, it's over. Game over. And then, like, all of a sudden, he's at the police outpost. Oh, right, right. And she's like, oh, well, you were injured. And I'm like, I'm sorry. His face got eat it off. Eat it off. He's deaded. He's a dead, 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 dead. That was an FX reference. He's, right he's deaded. He's no more. He has ceased to be. He has shuffled off the mortal coil. It eated him. Alive. No mores. And yet here he is with just like a scratch on his like a back or something. And she's like, oh, you're fine. Everything's fine. And he's like, what do you know about this? I don't, angry squid arms is You're all You're whacking the mic again. I hear the... <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's, it, it's, I don't want to say that it's, I'm fairly certain that there is some missing stuff on the floor of the, of, of the editing floor. Because what I would have loved is he's trying to get through that door, right? And somehow, like, he's panging on it and the monster's coming and it, like, it catches him. It, like, digs into the, his back and causes an injury. But then he hears a... And the door, boom! And Vanessa grabs him pulls him and says get back in or does something to the monster and it backs off and she slams the door and he's like passed out hearing like seeing like flashes of her saying get back in there I don't, I don't. like she says something or has a gun I don't know what she has she slams the door locks it and throws him in the tr in the police car and the rest of the three three to five seconds of the next thing is him in the back going, oh, what's going on? She's like, don't worry, Mike, I've got you. I'm taking, I'm going to get you. Don't I'm like, oh, the monsters were alive. No, they weren't. It's fine, Mike. I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you, get taken care of. And then he blacks out and wakes up in the outpost going, how did I get here? What am I doing here? That would have been far more effective. And I've been like, oh, okay. you know, what, you know what my theory is? What? And the writers or whatever, they can deny it all they want. Uh, uh, my theory is that this movie was originally supposed to be rated R. I don't doubt it. I have no doubts about that, actually. But they're like, we got a we got a lot of 
younger audience. Yeah. <laughs> we can't do a rated you're not, R movie. You're not going to make that money because they're not. Their parents are going to take them to see a rated R movie. I yeah. mean, they might, but a, like a larger pop group of the population won't get, go and see the movie, and maybe they won't let their kids watch it on on the t- on Peacock when they're yeah. on the weekends because it's scary and bloody and whatever. So that's the th- that's it. The does th- feel like there are some scenes missing in certain yeah. places? Yeah. Like, well, for example, like yeah, like why wasn't there an investigation on? The aunt's body. Yeah. And where did she go? And well, and when you she, know, she was like pulling up court orders and stuff. Like yeah. people were going to look for her. Yeah. Like she, <laughs> uh, her, so her lawyer is the weirdest kind of. He just dissociates the whole time. Yeah. And he's not like. He's They're like not, planning crimes in front of him and he's trying to leave. He's like, no, I can't be here. I, I should be, be here for this. I shouldn't. <laughs> he says it several times. It's just. And the actor is, is I love it because he, he does it well. Like it's like one of those few moments where like, okay, this guy's acting. Like this guy's actually pulling it together. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But it's also just like we don't see him ever again. Right. And I think probably what so my theory is is that some at some point in the drafting process they may have planned to have the aunt and the lawyer and maybe somebody come to the pizza place to talk to Mike or to get Mike in trouble or to serve him with something and that would have been a part of the movie where aunt, the aunt got murdered and the lawyer got murdered and whatever else. Yeah. I don't know. It just it feels the ending feels. W- <sighs> All right, we can't we can't get there yet. Um, anything else you want to talk about before I keep talking here? Uh, what you got? You got anything? I'm trying to remember the other YouTuber that was in the. Oh, Corey Kitchen. Yeah, so there's a couple of YouTubers that are in this. Matt Pat, of course, who should be the uh, intro security guy that dies yeah. was supposed to have been played by Markiplier, but oh. he was. He had scheduling conflicts because he was filming the Iron Lung. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, the taxi driver at the end is Corey Kitchen, uh, is, okay. who is a funny gamer YouTuber. He was. Okay. <laughs> I loved his scenes. I thought they were. Yeah. Funny. Okay. Um. <sighs> there should have been a couple more YouTubers in there. I think yeah, yeah, Daco yeah. and yeah, he should have been in there because yeah. When that guy, he beat uh, Ultimate Custom Night on the hardest setting, and the kid is so passionate about it, he like jumped up, screamed, and was crying. I mean, that's how you feel <laughs> though. When it's and hard. Scott Scott Cawthon himself has like donated because they do like live streams for charity where they stream the game, and yeah. Scott Cawthon himself has donated to these nice. YouTubers. Um. So the moment that he calls the aunt for help, yeah, and doesn't prep Abby at all. That was. Dumb was unfair too. Different. That was really unfair. Well, and it, so here's the thing about Mike. Here's what bothers me the most. And Zoe, you'll probably back me up on this. He has to have lived with Abby for at least a year or more at mm-hmm. this point. They're, they've been together as a family for several years. He hasn't figured this out. Like any any anybody in their right mind or even slightly wrong mind would have been like, okay, I'm calling someone for help. Hey, Abby, here's the deal. I, there's no one else I can call for help. I had to call your aunt June or whatever her aunt Julie, whatever. I don't even remember her name. She's that. Yeah, just yeah. a heads up. Like, <laughs> hey, and I and say, be like, this is why I'm doing this because I need to figure this out and make this right. Because your babysitter has not answered. In yeah, a few I, days. I don't. Yeah. I don't have your babysitter. <laughs> I can't get a hold of her. So look, she's gonna show up. We're gonna play a game. We're gonna make her happy. We're gonna do the right things. We're gonna say the right things, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna come right back as soon as I can to help you and to make it okay. But I need you to understand I'm doing this because I want to make sure I need to do something important. And I wouldn't do it, I wouldn't call her if I really, really had no choice. That would then set up a scene where the daughter manipulates the aunt and plays with her and messes with her. That would have been far more interesting and far more exciting than just the, oh, I hate you. It's like, dude, that's the plot. that plot hole is so big, that's a part where I just lost it. I was like, and we're done. Like, and I've had it. I, yeah, I agree. But, like, I feel like, I guess they did it just to create conflict so she would go back to Five Nights at Freddy's with the monsters. <sighs> and then there's all this stuff about the drawings. Like, she has to show them the real... Well, and, yeah, there's power in the drawings yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, that made no sense because we didn't get anything about that before. Like, she has the drawings and they're cool and they tell right. a story. But there's been no... Sign- unless I missed it in my fast-forwarding extravaganza... That there was no, like, hey, she has the power to make a drawing, and then it will affect the world, or it will change someone's whatever. Like, as well, she was, re- that was her way of reminding her friends, aka the animatronics, about what happened to them. Because they, okay, here's a little detail. Okay. In the dream sequences. Yes. Uh, and it's very easy to miss. 
sometimes, you know, when they have all the kids standing there, yeah. if you pay real close attention to some of the ones like in the back, they have no face. Ooh. So like it's, it's like, like it's like they are losing who they are. They're forgetting oh, who they are. Okay. So and they don't know what they don't understand what has happened to them. Yeah. In that one picture that Abby is drawing where Mike's like, oh, that's really good. There's me. And, he, and she's like, who else are all these other people? And yeah. she's like, they're my friends. She's like, I'm not finished with it yet. Um, they show that picture at the end. And it's actually those those children. Uh, OK. One's wearing the top hat. The other's wearing like the little bunny ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. One has the hook, yeah, because that's the animatronics they're put into. Yeah, but yeah. So if if you were to ever rewatch it, pay it real close attention okay. because I this my theory is the faces are blurred out because they they are forgetting who they are, they're who losing, they they're, are, they're losing their identity, what they went through. Okay. That's not a bad theory. I'm, I'm not going to dismiss that because that actually sounds about right. 90% um, of Five Nights at Freddy's is just theories. Theorizing. Yes. <laughs> and that, that can't, I think, I think that has some value. Um, I have a note here. I will shoot you. What the heck? Yeah. Um, <laughs> called the ant. So here's the thing. So when he picks up the prescriptions and the guy just genuinely wants to talk to him, he just grabs it and walks out. It's, yeah, he was very mean, very rude. Well, and I, I made this note. I'm and, he, and this, I'm at this. At this point, we're heading into the towards the tail end of the movie, and I said again, why do we like this guy? I don't. I don't like Mike, and I think in the interest of making him edgy and making him like angsty. Yeah. They created this character where I'm just like, I don't care if Mike gets eaten alive, burn him, eat him, <laughs> chop him up into finely pieced soup. I don't care. Like, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> Chop him up into Chop little pieces <laughs> and put him in a soup. Thank you, Vince. <laughs> he's, he's just I'm a little concerned. <laughs> it's the Halloween the house it's getting late. Right it's Halloween week, okay? Oh it's God, just uh, it. it's Halloween week. In Aaron's I, defense, he and he I surely fast forwarded through this part. Uh, the the babysitter, her her death is like probably that's this is the one where I was like, oh okay, they're doing it. Yeah. So like she runs into Freddy. Yeah. And you don't uh, want to run into Freddy. And Freddie, like, she approaches and, like, an arm reaches out and then, like, pulls her in. Yeah. And Freddie just chomps down and, like, just splits her in half. Oh, jeez. And it, you, everything else up to this point has been off screen. Yeah. And, I mean, you you see this through a shadow. Yeah. And then you just see, like, her bottom half drop. And I'm hey. like, oh, whoa, okay. Yeah. More of this, please, in the movie. And you didn't get any more. You didn't it. get it. <laughs> Thankfully for me, we didn't. So I got to keep fast-forwarding <laughs> without too much worry. Um, but so the storyline he's talking about is the babysitter was hired by the aunt to spy. Which we find out the babysitter's brother is one of the missing kids. Oh. Okay. Yep. So There's the connection. That, the weird thing about that would mean that, like, Either her brother or someone that her brother knew Ooh, was the one killed who killed her. her. Hi, that's so demented. So, but what they reveal in the movie is is that the, the dad, who is Matthew Lillard, of the dad of Vanessa, um, was controlling the kids. Mm-hmm. William Afton. William Afton. The William. evil. He is evil. Yeah. What's his animatronic name again? Springtrap. 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 Yep. yep. And so he he has been <laughs> controlling them. So he's taken over them and, and controls them remotely through his powers or whatever. Um, and so these kids are are under his control. And so they've been just doing this whole. Murdy thing and everything like that. Um, but they get their revenge. Yeah. They do. So the biggest plot hole, one of the bigger plot holes is Vanessa not sharing. She said, I won't be of any, of any use to you. Believe me. And I know what they're doing here is we're setting up her coming back to save him. But it's like she's, she's also unlikable because she knows what's at stake here. Right. And she's just so ignorant. And so she's, the thing is she keeps showing up to help him and talk to him, but then she won't go the full the full the full way yeah she's don't let this place get to you yeah and it's like well and she's like i've been trying to tell you it's like girl you haven't been telling him nothing get, get. i tried to tell you in my own way yeah <laughs> that's, that's what so she w- says and it's like, oh i was very mad <laughs> like dude just say what you mean yeah <laughs> um it's lillard when he reveals himself i said of course it is i was expecting this mm-hmm. um she does shoot him so that helps but it doesn't and he do stabs it. her he stabs her i don't so here's the thing i Here's the th- if 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 you're like if you're gonna go and threaten a character, make it believable, because she gets stabbed and I'm like okay she's dead now, but nah, she's, she's not. not. <laughs> so here's the here's how that scene would go better. Okay, so what we you could have done better is she gets stabbed. He goes oh god oh god oh god, 
rushes to her side and she's bleeding and he goes okay i'm gonna i'm gonna try and stop it and she's like you've got to stop him you got to get you got to turn it you got to turn it around and she's like fading and he's like no i got you i got you i got you he's like tell your sister or do something like she gives him and then she passes out and he's like no no you can't die you can't die and then dad says oh she'll die i'll make sure of it and he's like no you know, Abby, draw something or do like. There's the moment of like, hey, we gotta, we gotta move quick. She's gonna die. We gotta get him. What I don't know how you do it better because it's a whole mishmash in this end scene. Um, but then she draws something and <sighs> he turns off the power. And then he turns back on and the lights are super convenient in how they come on. They mm-hmm. spotlight the picture. Then they spotlight the animatronics. And they spotlight Matthew. I'm just like. But there's a whole lot of lights Did you- in the game. <laughs> Did you yes. guys notice, and this is a qu- question for you too, Zoe, because I don't know if you noticed this. Mm-hmm. When uh, she review- reveals the picture of her with her dad that's wearing the suit, did you notice that she is holding the same plane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. that. Uh, yeah, the brother had. The brother had. Yeah, I did. And I, I wish they had leaned more into that. I wish that had been kind of like. How demented is that? Yeah. So he's like a serial killer who collects trophies. And he's like, here, daughter, you can play yeah, with this one. And that's the brother's plane. Um, I, I do. Yeah. I, I wish that there had been hints of that plane somehow, like that we had maybe seen it, but he didn't like the, like we as an audience would have seen it on a shelf somewhere or we're, and it was like, was like, was like a slight, like you just said, like the, the wings been like, Whoa, what's that? And then it could cut away. And then like later we might see the propeller and we're starting to go, wait, why is the plane from the brother here? And that would have led us to sow some doubt about what's going on. What, but movie doesn't want to do that because this movie is not that way which is fine um i I did try to keep an open mind i kept asking myself throughout the movie i'm like okay i'm a fan yeah i'm enjoying this yeah how is a person that's not or never even heard of five nights of phrase before going to take on this movie yeah and i kept thinking about that and that's how i was like okay yeah there are definitely some issues here yeah so. It's it's so stylistically, it's great. The color, the way that the, the set is built, the lighting, all of that is great. It is the set was actually massive. Yeah, it's, they built it inside built of a Home Depot. Too. Yeah, Whoa. and the lighting is really on, on on target. Like all of the aesthetics of this movie are solid. Like you definitely do not want to stay in this place any longer than you have to. You want to get out. Um, what do we think about our main, our main, an, our main, our main antagonist death at the end? It, it happened almost. Okay, so that death, it resembles how he he dies in the games, mm-hmm. okay. but it's actually exactly how he dies in the books. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who are wondering, he the, the she paints the picture, drives the picture, puts it on the wall, the spotlight hits it coincidentally, and then it resets all the kids and they turn on their creator. Um, and what do they, do they, they realize that he's evil and not like a good person. Yeah. yeah. And they, so what they're ha- reminded do, that he killed them. Do yeah. they, does somebody stab him and it sets off the inner mechanisms or does it just snap? I, I, I'm trying to remember. I can't actually remember. Okay. I will say in the, in the game, what happens is the four ghost children. Oh no. Mr. Cupcake bites off. Part yeah. That's of the yeah. And trigger, exposes it. Tr- triggers. It's in internal spring lock mechanisms. Okay. But in the game. So that's exactly how it works. Like in, in the book, silver eyes. Yeah. Um, uh, and in the game, I think it, I forget which one it was, but, um, he dies by the ghost children. They're yeah. not in the animatronic suits. Yeah. He sees the ghost and he gets freaked out and they, uh, trick him into running into the same back room that he would kill them in uh-huh. and at this point like the place is all run down it's broken and it's leaking and yeah. water gets into the suit and causes uh, it to okay but so and, we were kind of waiting for that to happen like it didn't but it didn't but it went the book way yeah where they drag them off and <laughs> right i do like that i i, I like that one better. it's very much of a funeral procession mm-hmm. kind of thing very very like oddly i don't know what the word is for it but a haunting funeral procession um i like that they at the end we see him in the room and one of the kids i think it's in his he's in his kid form right he's in his ghost kid form and he's like help me help me and he's like and the kid just closes the mm-hmm. door on him um what i would have liked to have seen is like all the kids around him as he's dying and i i know because it, it says like as children not in the yeah suit. yeah as children yeah. so here's the thing as in the at the end of this uh, in the wikipedia entry it says during the end credits which i missed because i was just happy to be done with it uh, you should have watched them 
Well, I saw it has some little Easter eggs. I saw the Easter egg with the with the with the taxi, <laughs> where the taxi driver, the little thing that the, the guy always turns, yeah, balloon guy. shows yeah, balloon up. Boy. You do not like Balloon Boy. He's yeah, he's not annoying. Good. <laughs> he, he he doesn't. The balloon Boy never kills anybody. He's just annoying. He's just annoying. He just okay. shows up to okay. And you can't get rid of him. you. Oh, uh, okay. Well, even better. Um, during the end credits, a distorted voice spells out, "Come find me." Yes. Yes. So do we and know the, the way? Okay, go ahead. Ask your do question. Do we know who that is? Yes. I have. She says yes. There are theories. <laughs> so it, it could either be. Uh, William Afton. Okay, that's who I think it is. Saying, you know, come find me, because in in the movie he's like, I'll be back. I'm yeah. always. Go- I always. He, I always come back. Yeah, he says that in the game, and of course he does always come back. Sometimes it's dead. Yeah, but uh, or it could be, and Zoe pointed this out after the whole goofy Five Nights at Freddy's song plays. Yeah, uh, a music box starts playing. Okay. Which is from the and game. that and that music box references another character that is not in this movie. Okay, uh, and it's a puppet. Oh, okay. And I'm I'm thinking the com- which the puppet was the first child to die. Oh, uh, okay. Which we're not. This is sequel material okay. we're talking gotcha, about here. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm thinking it could be the puppet. Yeah. Or it could be, and I don't know if you noticed this or not, but the animatronic that picked up Abby to take her to. Yeah. Totally different animatronic than all the others. Oh. It, that was Golden Freddy. Okay. The original Freddy suit. Oh. It could okay. be that one. Okay. Same. So but, that. But that is also like um, a little mini game within the game, and okay. you have to like do something in particular for it to pop up. But yeah. Yeah. Like voice. in the game, it's like, Arr, like you can barely make out the letter, like yeah, what yeah, it's yeah. spelling. Yeah. Yeah. So those are my theories. And yeah. that little mini game is kind of wh- how you get the little backstory, little piece by piece. Yeah, little <laughs> tiny, and they pop up at random after yeah. you die. <laughs> so. Let me find. So the so what I would have liked to have said, like, I would have liked them to have been around him when he died and to have yeah. him to take his final breath, and you know for them to say you won't come back. I mean, yes, sequel material, whatever. Right, right, right. But for them to say we won't let you come back, you die today. And like getting closer and closer to him, and like holding out to him, like that would have been a more powerful ending. And then the door closes behind him, and we hear like, ah, you know, and scream. But I'm just, I, I, I agree. think you're scaring him. your wife. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> a little topping up into pieces a little bit. I think oh, I think seeing them as children around him yeah. while being in the suit would have been more powerful. More powerful. I, I, I agree. I agree. Well, in Aaron's defense, I think this is a weird thing we have in common, but. We'll go dark if, like, you mess with people we love. Right, right, right. Especially, yeah. like, kids in our classrooms. Yeah. Like, you, you mess with kids in our rooms, we're, we're, it's not going to be, it's not going to go well It's only you. a donkey cow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking through to see where I had, a, I had an idea about, like, how we could do something differently. And I remember writing it down. Uh, Doug is an idiot lawyer. I'm just going way, way back. <laughs> What's the game? But he was actually kind of funny. <laughs> he was. I liked. I was he, just like, you, this guy sucks. Why did you hire this guy? <laughs> yeah. Um. Wait for it. I'm trying to find it. So yeah, it was just. It's. I don't. I. The actor is legit. Like he's got. He's a great actor. He's, yeah, Hunger Games. Yeah, Hunger. Yeah. Peter. All I could think was Peter. Peter. <laughs> he's 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 got yeah. a, he's got yeah. a every he's, time. Yeah. He's he's got he's got a pretty good, like thing on is like he's the hunger games obviously mm-hmm. he was in the he was in the zathura as well um he's got some in, disney credits i think yep um was he percy jackson or was that someone else no it was somebody else so he's been he's been doing movies mm-hmm. yeah not a lot of like not the biggest ones that we know of recently um but yeah his he was in five nights at freddy's that's that was this i think this is his, his it feels like it's his his return i would agree with that. um to kind of try to be and branch out and not yeah. be like just hunger games and, yeah. yeah it can be hard for actors sean oh, astron yeah. talked about after lord of the rings kind of struggling being typecast as sam mm-hmm. okay so yeah so when we, so I made a note, female police officer Vanessa Shelley, what the heck is going on? Why is she here? Is she an expositional dump again? And yes, she was an expositional she dump. She was. Um, so how I would have done that differently is you could have eliminated her altogether. And she could have like been picking up like like ser- like service journals like of previous security officers and be like kind of like looking through the journals and seeing all the like the security officer like different names every like couple of months or something and kind of going, well, that's weird. What's that all about? It also, it didn't get any mention that that, the little box of security badges was full. 
I think those were just prizes because they had like a ticket number on them. Those said like, like security guard. Tickets. Like that said security, like Fre- Freddy Fassbender, Freddy yeah. whatever security. Yeah. Those are just toys then? Uh, that, that was what I thought whenever I saw the... Got, whenever with all the prizes were... Yeah, because she, she got that from the prize counter. So I think okay. that was just something I totally you read that got, then. like as a... That's hilarious. Here <laughs> I am. It could have been like a double. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and then we get the, the, the VHS like intro, like, welcome to the, the Freddy <laughs> security team. <laughs> and I was just like... Which I, I, I didn't find this out. I saw it online. If you brighten up the screen, you can see... Uh, Underneath where it has Mike written, yeah, there's another name, Fritz, which is a security guard from Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the game. Oh, uh, okay. And Mike is actually uh, the security guard in the first game. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's a, it's not a. Bad there are so many little Easter eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. And I think I think that's the struggle to, in in in, my, in Zoe's in, in in Phil's defense. It's a movie that has a lot of fan service. It has to pay off in order to be successful and for people to want to come watch it. For kids to be like, oh yeah, I want to go see Freddy's because it's going to have all these callbacks to the game I've been playing for like ten years. Yeah. And the sequels <laughs> and the books I've been reading and all the stuff I've been consuming. Um, it's not a bad movie. It's in nowhere, shape, or form. It is no Pinocchio for Thank cars. Yeah, I could watch that movie every night. Yeah, and not have to and, deal with Pinocchio. Yes. <laughs> you could wash Pinocchio out of your brain. Um, in it is, it's stylistic. It does have some plot holes, but it is, it tries to stay consistent. It does its, it does the work. Um, it's not a bad movie. I would give it probably a seven out of ten. That's that's what I gave it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just I wish it was scarier. Yeah, and you I wouldn't have watched it if it would have. No, been. I wouldn't have. I would have uh-huh. been fat. But it would have been a five minute movie. <laughs> yeah, five minutes of Freddy's. Yeah, five minutes. For the sake of amusement, what do we rate Pinocchio? Zero. Zero. Five. <laughs> one point five. I don't give for, it a rating. Well, no. So I would say one. I would say it gets some points for Polly Shore and just being having the audacity to do that. Um, and and for That's John so Heater to have you. to have Napoleon Dynamite in your movie, so like point two then, and then to have that really like actually a that good musical song that was a good song that was legit. I would say for the song, I'll give it a point one. I would give it a I, you know what it it had its moments. Uh, most of them were terrible. <laughs> moments. It, it had some nice like <laughs> landscapes in the background. Um, uh, Maybe a one. One. I, 1.2. I'm, I'm a, the harshest critic in the room. Uh, I really want to give it a zero, but yeah. I'm going to I'm I'm say 1. If, if only for the amusement and having to watch it and go, what happened? I'd say 2 out of 10. Aaron. 20%. Still uh, not this far from passing. It's like an F. That movie physically hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it I caused like, it to Ugh. fail a test. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you Phil, are having trouble finding words for Phil, a while. Phil's going Phil's to put a letter in for compensation from... from <laughs> Pinocchio, a true story. I deserve <laughs> compensation. I have, Look. I have been hurt by this movie. Oh. It was funny because after I, after I took that quiz, I, I messaged my instructor and was just like, "Ew, I'm going to have to retake that." <laughs> <laughs> so the nice thing about life is you can always retake the test in life. Sometimes. Sometimes. So there's Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, again, that's I, as a lit- as a language arts teacher and as a writer, um, I, I take it apart because it. It just it, there's there's so much that I'm just like no I can't let that go. Yeah, and there and there were parts I was I, watching it with Zoe. I was like, oh, Aaron's gonna hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I've built a brand. I have a reputation to keep up. But it's 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 not it's it's I would I don't know if I would watch it again because it is just that oh it's so scary and stuff. But it's not it's not the worst movie and it's it's serviceable. It functions. It does what it describes. It does what it intends to do, and. Part of me thinks that that scene where they do the whole like building a cave and you know having a funny li- it's almost as if it was trying to be to have to be as absurd as possible mm-hmm. to break that little mold of this is a horror movie, right. but guess what? It's gonna be Ferris Bueller's Day Off for a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, and then they get back into it. So yeah. it's just it felt it feels almost intentional to kind of be like, hey, we're gonna try and flip the script on you a little bit and kind of and fake you out um, and and give and it and if taking the rest of the movie out of it and you have that little scene. It is a touching scene mm-hmm. because these kids, they just want to be kids. They just want to hang out and make a fort. And you have Vanessa who knows so much and you have poor Mike who is just... Like, what is happening? Yeah, his, <laughs> his face during this whole scene is just disbelief. He's yeah. like, what are we doing? Should I leave her with them? Right, like, this doesn't feel good. <laughs> so the other, the last thing we'll say before we close out, we're at an hour and 45 minutes, which oh, seems wow. to be our new normal. <laughs> another banger. Another, another, another run. So he initially sells out his sister. For his brother. 
Yeah. He does. Oh yeah. He's like he's like yeah. Take her. Yeah. Because they're like uh, we can we can show you this every night. You can be with your brother again yep. and yep. Just give us Abby. Yep. And he goes okay. And oh, another thing that I'm theorizing. So a- Abby is spelled A B B Y. Yeah. Right. There is a animatronic that shows up later on in the games called Baby. Oh. So we're thinking. So the, through the whole movie. Oh yeah, movie, you just mix the letters around. So through the and that is so totally a Scott Coffin thing to do. Hmm. So through the whole movie, I'm like these animatronics. They're going to get her. Yeah. And they're going to they try. They're going to turn her into baby. Oh wow. Well, Which they, they almost. They did. almost do. They get close. And funny, little another little Easter egg that the animatronic that they almost put her in is from the books. It's Ouch. on the cover of one of the books. Jeez. So yeah, t- again he's. I wish he was more likable as a character because I just thought about that. I'm like, yeah, he was gonna salad his sister. Like, I don't know. Are you dancing? Like, why are you dancing? I, I I just remember something, and I told you not to let me forget this. <laughs> okay, I forgot. <laughs> so this is another fun little fact okay. about Scott Cawthon. He started off as a game developer making Christian games, ah. and he has a game called like Chips Woodland Adventure or something like that. <laughs> Okay. And he was he was failing as a game developer. Yeah. Until someone came up to him one day and was like, that looks like a scary version of Chuck E. Cheese. And that's what started it? And that's what started the whole See, thing. See, that's what I kept thinking about as you talked about this. I yeah. kept thinking about being like a kid. Back in the day, Aaron, you may remember this. I remember Chuck E. Cheese. Well, but it was called Showbiz Pizza at first. Yep. You remember that. Yep. Those were... That's- it's scary and looking. they were scary there's a but doc- as in the 80s we didn't think twice about it there's a documentary right. probably on YouTube and I think Netflix which, it was go, which goes into Chuck E. Cheese history and talks about how the animatronics got developed and oh there's yeah. so many conspiracy theories about Chuck E. Cheese and uh, being the same as Fred, 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 yeah. Fred, 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 Fred. Mm-hmm. Well, well that's immediately what I thought of I'm like yeah. oh yeah yeah no it's, it's went to birthday parties <laughs> <laughs> several yeah, I don't know if I remember what Chuck. I, my parents would probably be able to help me, but I don't remember if I went to Chuck E. Cheese's. And I, did, oh, I, I mean, did. was I wasn't like a weekly hangout, but I went a couple times for yeah. birthday parties. Yeah, and all but that. yeah, I remember when it was Showbiz Pizza and the commercials. And yeah. All that. So if you're if you're listening, you should go on YouTube and search for Chuck E. Cheese documentary or Showbiz Pizza documentary. It's really fascinating. Um, the level of tech that at the time that they used yeah. to create this and then mass produce it to be used across the United States as animatronics. It's very fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, the age of animatronics, I feel like, is still there, but it's not as prevalent as it used to be. And uh, that's something we could maybe... It just creeps out modern kids these days. Yeah. yeah. I've tried to have conversations with, like, we didn't think this was creepy at the time, guys. Yeah. It wasn't creepy to us at the time. Yeah. Zoe, and I, Zoe and I think, like, if they could ever make... A real Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, jeez. They would make bank. So like a horror themed oh. restaurant. So here's the thing is if they would. Oh, you should tell them about Casper, Wyoming after this. Oh, yeah. So the thing about that probably is you would. It would the liability would be insane because yeah. if kids were interacting and got violent or something like that, it would be. And plus, you're talking about having like middle school and like fifth graders who are interested in played Five who are now into that Five Nights at Freddy culture. Um, I agree that yeah they'd want to climb all over them and yeah stuff and they'd want to engage you, we'd have a real bite of 87 type situation <laughs> yeah yeah it would, it would not be good so I, I like the idea and I think it probably would make the millions if you did it for adults only I'm, I'm sure that it would sell out everything um, there is a restaurant in Casper Wyoming that is basically a horror themed restaurant okay. where all the the dishes and the, and the burgers and stuff are like related to horror movies and scary they have movies like paraphernalia from like classic horror oh, films oh yeah, yeah. so if you're, ever, if you're ever up really in good the, burgers up in the, cas- up in the Casper area um it's a whole, I don't remember what it's called offhand, but and it's, it's little shop of little burgers. I little think. shop of burgers, yeah. Oh wow, that clever! I'm telling you, <laughs> that's clever. Yeah, you, know, you know, take take a three day weekend someday, and, and it's horror like all the time. Yep. It's not like yeah. oh yeah, no, it's all it's, the time. It's, they've got it all going on there. Okay. It's pretty as cool. long as nothing's jumping out, jumping nope. out at no, me. I'm we did fine. Okay. <laughs> we've gone we more than once. I didn't. I was. I didn't. I'm like, we have to do Casper. I have to. I didn't have to fast forward through my meals. Oh good. Yeah, we're good. And on that note, um, what are we doing next week? Hmm. I have an idea. Okay. Let's not torture ourselves again. Okay. Maybe Oh Brother Where yes, Art Thou. Yes, that's what I was going to say. All right. We'll do, our brother, we'll do Oh Brother Where Art Thou. He's bonafide. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good line. We will not, we will not be a man of constant Turn him into a horny toad. It'll be great. He turned Pete into a horny toad. <laughs> yes. It's I'm excited. Stuff. All right. So stick around for that for next week. Until then, my name is Aaron. I'm Phil. I'm Zoe. I'm Vicky. This has been Nerds by Screenlight. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a <laughs> have a good rest of your whatever it is. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the raspberry flapovers will be out in a moment. <laughs> the kitchen is closed. You've been.
been listening to the Nerds by Screenlight podcast presented by Create at Morgan Productions, located in Fort Morgan, Colorado, USA. For more information on our production house, other podcasts hosted here, and further details, please visit www.createatmorgan.org. You can find us on Twitter at the handle Create at Morgan. Create at Morgan is a school club at Lincoln High School, our alternative education campus in Morgan County. Our sponsor is Aaron DeLay, the language arts teacher at Lincoln. Send any feedback to a delayed teacher at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Oh,